Oh, is it happening? Hello? <laughs> oh, a little no. visitor. Wait, am I starting? <laughs> no, we're, we'll roll into it. We'll roll into it. But if I say something that's interesting, I might keep it. I have a funny story, too. I'll tell you all about when we start. Oh, sweet. Um, I was walking outside today and I was thinking about how wonderful it is not to care what you look like at all. Like I wake up and I could like literally dress myself in the dark. I don't care. And I walked outside and I was like, you know what? This is fucking great. I don't have to worry about a goddamn thing. And it's hot as hell. And I look like shit. And I don't give a fuck. And that made me feel really great today. (laughs) It's a glorious feeling. It was a glorious feeling. Yeah. I used yeah. to do hair, and well, I've mentioned that to you. And so yeah. it was literally part of my job to give a crap what I look like. And so now I'm like living in pajamas all day, every day, and it's the best. It's the best. That is the best. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The best. The best. It's the best in the West. I just have to make sure I don't wear the same shirt two days in a row because if I'm on calls and stuff, like people know. I mean, I did wear the shirt on Monday, so we have a day in between. But that's a good point. I feel like I... Mark Zuckerberg and just wear the same one every day. Get like 15 of the same shirt. Yeah, like I'll an Adrian honest. Monk closet of shirts. Yeah, I wear the same clothes frequently as the day before, but I always just cover them in mud. If I see anybody important, I usually. Wear I mean, you literally things. have like two pair of shoes. Yeah, and it is not Croc season anymore. I walked outside today and I was like, fuck no, sandals it is. Like it's too hot. I got Nope. Them. Yeah, no on the rubber shoes. Partially closed <laughs> shoes are no good anymore. <laughs> like, I need the hit, airflow on it my It hit toes. 90 today and I was like, mm-mm, not today. <laughs> <laughs> my com- Canadian brain is sitting here being like, your, your blood is boiling, what? <laughs> I know, what is 90 Celsius? In Celsius. I don't know. Hot? I, I have no idea. 90 I'm Celsius. looking to see what... Um, hold on. So it's 81 degrees right now, Fahrenheit. Um, what is boiling in Celsius? 100. Okay, it's so it's... 27 degrees right now here. So 90 Fahrenheit. Um, 90 Celsius is probably like 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Jeez. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So it's supposed to be 33 degrees Celsius tomorrow. I'm going to die. If that means anything to you. What? I will perish. I will just explode. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, that has been a good lesson in uh, why all of the degrees need to be the same. Um <laughs> <laughs> The ones that make sense? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. The ones that start at zero? Um, (laughs) Zero. (laughs) Um, Anyway. Yeah, what's like freezing temperature in Celsius? Zero. That's easy. Yeah? Zero is freezing and 100 is boiling. Yeah. Easy math. No. No, no, no. No. It gets really confusing because then when it's minus 40, I think that's, what is that? That's, no, 40 is freezing in Fahrenheit, right? 32 is freezing. 32. 32? Okay. So 32 Celsius is a hot day. It's a warm day. But it's not boiling. So wait, what is, oh, I was... (laughs) Boiling is 100 degrees Celsius. I got it. I know. (laughs) Freezing is zero degrees Celsius. (laughs) You have to teach back of the weather. No, I just forgot. Did you think I was talking about Fahrenheit? No. I just, when you said boiling, I thought me boiling outside, which was like 100 degrees, and I was like, wow. And then we were actually talking about water, and then I was like, oh, right, water, 100 degrees Celsius, wow. And then I was like, oh, and then it took me this long to figure out the boiling in Fahrenheit is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is over, yeah. Not just a arbitrary, my body is boiling. (laughs) Number. (laughs) 
I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. I thought it was Tuesday this morning, and then I switched my thinking and thought it was Thursday. It's, you know. <laughs> this is wow. blue past the whole day. <laughs> I know. Wednesday didn't even fucking exist. Not I've done that. I know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should we start? Yeah. We can talk about our days like a like a regular podcast. Yeah, let's do that. I like I like that. Yeah. Right. Because everybody knows who you are anyway. You've asked the most questions. Or they they've but, heard of you for sure. I, I don't know about that. That's do you see some people that that say some stuff to you because they listen to us? Uh I've us? had a few people yeah, a couple people have through me through you guys and they've talked to me through that, but it hasn't been something like, I heard you on the podcast today. It's been mostly mm. people that I already know and then they listen to yeah, the podcast yeah, yeah. and they're like, Yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. Yeah. It's still cool. I still like that. Because we're two peas in a pod. Yep. <laughs> 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 That's what I told people to say instead of um You did say in- that? Yeah, that's, that's what funny. I told people to say instead of. Did you say like appropriate sayings would be two peas in a pod, or <laughs> I was like, off, I was like, you know, I feel like BFF. the peas in the pod is like more something, you know, like two peas in a pod. Then we're like friends, and you know, <laughs> but no BFFs. You cannot say BFFs. <laughs> no, you're out if you say BFFs. <laughs> I'm a BFF. I don't forever. personally like it, but what's yeah, what's wrong with that for you? That's a lot of commitment. <laughs> <That's a laughs> it lot. is forever. You're right. That is so true. <laughs> That's a lot of commitment for Becca. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, should we start? Yeah. Okay. Just Hi. <laughs> Hi. We're live. Hi. Guess who we have on the podcast today? Hey. Aletha. Hello. Aletha Hi. Bean. Hello. It's me. Our MLV. <laughs> MVL. <laughs> <laughs> what would a good acronym for MLV either. be? Most loved volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> I am down with hanging out with Tom Hanks on an island for a long time. That sounds great. Sweet. <laughs> well said. I'm so glad you got that like right away because I was almost like, Wilson. Um <laughs> Am I the only one who sobbed about that volleyball? Like, that Dude, so it's been a long time since I've seen Castaway. I feel like I should watch it again. I feel like only there was like some, about a volleyball. I feel like there's some video where they like break down. He worked way too hard to like get to that volleyball. The whole like jump. He could have jumped off and got it and came back without getting too far. I don't know. Because he was on the ground. Some people get deep on some of these, like, some of these movie things or stars and Titanic. And if it matched the constellations, just watch that. That's a lot. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that is a lot. Uh, Oh, I was going to say, you know, what I really want to watch again is The Terminal. I've only seen that once. Oh, I love that one. That was so good. Yeah. He makes sandwich- yeah, he makes sandwiches out of like uh, saltine crackers and mustard and mayo. Gross. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that yeah, sounds that's gross. Awful. <laughs> Disgusting. Which I went to do, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're living exactly. in an airport and you have no money, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aletha, tell us if um if this isn't like a precursor to what this episode is gonna be. If you don't like <laughs> random conversations, completely ADHD style, don't listen. Um. Anyway, moving on, Aletha, tell us who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I am Aletha of Aletha Bean. Um, I am a Canadian, and I do, do pottery in my basement. Have cats. Our first Canadian. Well, like, really, our first Canadian. 
Did we have a partial Canadian in the past? Well, we interviewed somebody that was Canadian, but um, the interview got messed up. Yeah. So we couldn't air it. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm very so, curious how that went, but I won't press that. Well, nobody, yeah, was, will, nobody will hear it. So It was just technical difficulties and stuff. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so Aletha, how long have you been doing pottery? I started by taking some lessons with a fellow art community friend, Krista Cameron, here in Brockville. That was in 2018, and I, like, immediately fell in love with it. I think it's really great. So I went out and bought everything I needed, and I put it in my second bedroom. And then, well, 2018, so, like, for a year, I did it at home just as a hobby. And then COVID hit, so then I did it full-time. I've been doing it full-time for a year and a bit now. So COVID was what brought you to full-time? Yeah, yeah. I did hair before, and with the lockdowns, you couldn't do hair because you're touching people. So yeah, yeah. I leaned into it as my side hustle, and yeah. here I am. Yeah. Especially in Canada, because they didn't, they don't like Canada. <laughs> Canada. I don't yeah, know. Oh, yeah. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> the land I call my home. Um, <laughs> uh, Should we stand up? Like, what do we have here? <laughs> yes, yeah. We were pretty strict about these kinds of things, so we couldn't do it for, I think it was between March and June that first year that we couldn't go to work. So, wow. so I made pots and it was great. It was awesome. So you're about, a, you're about a year in, kind of on the side. But you did you already have all the equipment when COVID hit, or you just you were kind of doing studio lessons and stuff? I the- had all the equipment because I went insane, and I was like, "I'm gonna buy a kiln, I'm gonna buy a wheel, I'm gonna buy a give a grip, I'm gonna buy it all," and I did. And I'm really glad that I had it all there because if I didn't, I would be in some trouble. Yeah. So I bought it all as a hobby and. You know, I kind of sold commission style on the side, but I was pretty adamant that it was going to be, this is a side hustle. This is a, a thing that I do, mm-hmm. and I sell it just to support the thing that I do. And, right. uh, and then, yeah, and then the world fell apart, and I was like, hey, <laughs> I guess I do more of this now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, I feel like, <laughs> have you been doing pretty well? Like, how do you feel about it? I'm I'm busier than I can keep up with, so that's good. <laughs> That's, That's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't make as much money. If we're talking purely numbers, I don't make as much money as I did in my full-time job, but I also well, don't work <laughs> so How that. long did you do your full-time job for? 15 years. 15 yeah. years so, of hair. Wow. 15 years versus one year of pottery. I think you can give yourself some fucking slack. That is what I keep telling myself every time yeah. I pay the bills. Yeah. Most people <laughs> don't even make a profit their first year, so... I certainly didn't. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty normal with every business, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. a lot of businesses take a lot up front to just get equipment and get going, right? Like, yeah. what's a business mm-hmm. that is basically zero expense or very, very low expense and, like, amazing profit? Therapy. Immediately? Yeah, like, <laughs> education, talking and stuff is probably pretty low, right? <laughs> I mean, There's the only the thing you have to spend so much money on education to do those kinds of things. Though. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of um, upfront costs. Yeah. Pre pre job. Yeah. Like giving advice for money, but like, what gives you the credentials to be giving advice that yeah. you can ask people to pay you for it? I looked it up actually recently because I was like, maybe I could become a therapist. Um, <laughs> and and I. You have to have a master's in um, philosophy to have, a th- or a therapy, or, I don't even know. I'm not smart enough to, like, actually know what degree you're supposed to have, but you're supposed to have a, a master's in it to yeah, even be a therapist. Yeah, I don't think you can side hustle therapy. And you have to have an undergraduate degree in in some sort of therapy field and then, and then uh, do the master's. You might have to have a PhD. I'm not even sure. So... That seems like a lot of work that I'm not willing to do. One of my good friends is going into therapy, like to be a therapist. And, and anyway, it's a lot. She's been talking about school for ages and it's really beautiful, but it's also like, oh my God, I don't know if I can handle academia like that. 
Well, I mean, you wonder how they have so much patience. And it's because if they didn't, they'd probably not make it through school, I suppose. Right. Yeah, you have to have some pretty good uh, stamina to get through school that many years. Yeah. And I'm sure those aren't those aren't just like memorization classes. Like there's a lot of thought <laughs> and some like deep thinking that go into those like very, very heavy things that you're learning and stuff in that kind of education. Track. Yes. Would you rather kill one child or 16 children on the train? <laughs> you have oh, to make a choice. Oh, I hate that one. Oh. <laughs> no, thank you. I'd rather be like, would you rather explode your bisqueware or wait a day? That's or the kind the- of conundrum I want to deal with. <laughs> it's so fucking hard for me to uh, to be like, God, when I see somebody with a post of their bisque exploding, I'm like, is one of those like Facebook situations where you're like, just scroll past, just scroll past, scroll past without saying a goddamn do thing. Do I want to scold <laughs> them or do I want to show it's sympathy? like, I know the answers to your, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. I know the answers to your questions, but you're not asking questions. So I'm not answering. <laughs> You're like, they are not ready for the truth. They can't handle the truth. (laughs) I feel like so many of these have to be prefaced with just, I'm not looking for advice. I know I fucked up. Anyway, (laughs) look at my horrible mess. (laughs) Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking for sympathy. Looking for sympathy. Looking for advice. advice. Looking for... (laughs) answers you know we should have little tags um okay so tell us a little bit about what you make you're carving a little bit aren't you i carve quite a lot i really enjoy that part that's the part that actually when i watch you ryan and you just like run your thumb along the bottom of it i think there's so many things you could do with the bottom of those mugs but, uh, the, that's like just the, because i enjoy the bottom it. bottom or just the bottom, bottom edge up. all of it all, all over the the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Basically, just all of it. I really enjoy throwing. So I do mostly throwing. I don't do a whole lot of hand building. I, I don't really enjoy it all that much. I keep trying, but every time I do it, I think it's worse. And then I realize I don't like it. So uh, none of that. And then, yeah, I trim all my pieces, much to a lot of people's disagreement, but that's a good thing. <laughs> and I carve a lot. I think that carving is a lot of fun. You know what? It's your business, and you can do whatever you fucking want. Yeah, as long as you're as long as you're pricing it appropriately for the time you spend on it, like do whatever you know. What are your average prices? This is great because we haven't had anybody that was new, new, new. Like, let's see, Trevor is new, but not really all that new, um, because he's been doing it for a while. Uh, do we have have we had anybody that was like new, 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 new? Like not last like, five years, new. Not like full time. I don't think. Yeah, you're a first. You're the first Canadian and the first um, farmer's market potter. <laughs> My noob. I love it. <laughs> I I feel honored. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So prices. Keep in mind, <clears throat> these are Canadian prices, and I probably am not charging enough. I recently just timed myself in one of my carvings, and it took like three times as long as I thought it did. So I'm probably not charging enough. Okay, hold on. Let me get my Canada to yeah, right. um, Canadian U.S. conversion. To U.S. dollar. 77 cents. Uh, one Canadian dollar okay. is 77 Tell us. U.S. Okay. How many dollars do you sell a mug for? Usually my... 10 to 12 ounce mugs are $45 Canadian. How much is that American? Okay. $34.66. That's not enough. <laughs> Those are like carved uh, mugs? Yeah. Carved mugs. Sometimes I'll do dip mugs and then I feel like I should charge less for them. But and when, uh, really, we, they should be. When we're talking carved, <laughs> is it. It's like a, a quick design, right? It's like a graphical kind of thing. And then you're. Are they inlaid color, like black, and then mm-hmm. you're glazing? Yeah, I'll take a, a black wash under glaze, and I'll wipe it on it at the bisque stage and wipe it back. Mm-hmm. You look really hot in this picture. Well, thank you. 
<laughs> I'll take it. It's like the only time I post out selfies is when I'm in my light box looking kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, I love the I love those um like the quick black and white carvings ones that you've been doing on the slightly speckled clay. That's just got like a white background and the colored inside. That's probably my favorite style to do is that black and white. So yeah, all those do you people are... like those? They seem to. Um, I think if they don't, they're kind of out of luck. They're going to have to go to someone else because that's what I like to do. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Well, it, well it, that's it, good. It really, it really focuses on, I think the white, the white mug just kind of sets a nice background that's not distracting. And then the black is just like pops. So it's just, you know, you can just focus on what the graphics is and you're like, because I like to look all around. So it looks like it's all different around there. Like I would definitely pick them up and roll them around and be like, all right, that's cool. What kind of plan is that? Or Yeah, they're a lot of fun. And every single one of them is a little bit different because I don't use a yeah. stencil or anything like that. Lately, I've been getting a kick out of these little <clears throat> village kind of ones where there's houses mm -hmm. and apartments carved the whole way around. And I'll always try I to hide that. a cat in one of the windows. Fuck it's yes. my favorite part. Fuck <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like, do you remember that? What was that book? Um, it's not Silly Town. Oh, fuck, what was it? And there was always a June bug in every page. It was, fuck. I I'm cussing a lot funny. today. I'm sorry. I'm very tired. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Becca. Dun, 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 dun. Is this the worm dun, that works? Dun, 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 dun. Um, maybe. <laughs> was it silly town I, I don't know oh shit silly town oh that's that's blues clues um. <laughs> that's way off Jeez. <laughs> that's really way off no it was a book and then uh huh uh huh uh huh what was it no. found it no I did not I did not find it wait wait you had our hopes up there, Becca. Jeez. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're leaving us hanging. <laughs> and you know what? I think it was Silly... Was it Silly City? Oh, I'll, Funny Town? Silly Town. Funny Town? I don't know. I'll find it. I'll find it and report back next week. I'll ask my mom. She'll know. Um, so, anyway. so what's kind of the mixture of the forms you like to make a lot or that you kind of keep in your inventory to sell for the most part? Mugs, because people buy them. Um, Good. I love mugs. I make berry bowls a lot. because It's really fun to punch the holes. People seem to like them, too. But I am <laughs> apparently a little more tactile than I thought now that I'm describing this. Yeah. So berry bowls. I make planters sometimes. Um, just regular bowls are my favorite because they're fun to throw. I make tiny little bowls. They go really quickly, and everybody loves dip for the nuggets. Oh, like little in. mise en place or, oh, it's like a dip size. So it's like the size of your palm, maybe? Mm. Anywhere between there. Okay. I mean, think okay. like McDonald's ketchup cup to, to like yeah. nacho dip. Everywhere between there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> They're like my pinch pot sizes, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, wide. Yeah. I have an idea that just popped into my head that I think would be really uh, beneficial to you, maybe. Not that you asked, so I'm, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Um, <laughs> as we were just talking about unsolicited advice, no, I was thinking about your prices and how you're like, well, that's too low. And I was thinking, you know what helped me is I raised my prices a dollar at a time, and um, it didn't seem so crazy at the time, you know. And I think that if I was gonna do it again, I'd probably just like warn everybody and be like, just so you know. I'm going to start raising my prices by a dollar a month. <laughs> a dollar and a month. I love that. Like a dollar a month until I get to this price that I feel that I'm I'm worth, obviously, now. But I'm going to give you guys time, you know? Like, yeah. I, that's really great. Because I haven't put my prices up since uh, it was October 2020 when I was uh, putting everything on Etsy. And at that point in yeah. time, I put my prices up a little bit to include shipping. But since then, I mean, gas has doubled, groceries have doubled, everything's doubled. So I'm not really sure why I'm not. But I'll get there. Right. I'll 
I'll get there. It'll be yeah, fun. there I were some mentions yeah. about like, you know, small businesses shouldn't feel like they have to be, you know, they're immune to upping their price for the cost of inflation. Like, mm-hmm. Especially if it's your livelihood, like your, yeah. your cost of goods costs more just like everybody else's. Mm-hmm. And you have control of what you charge, I think I'm still feeling that way too. so new. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, it is. It's so like hard that. when you are new. Like, I remember when I started selling, as we know, I price my stuff way too low regardless. But um, I used to at least. Um, well, I guess I still do. Anyway. Uh, I. Your shitty cuts are definitely cheaper than they need to be. They're still oh, yeah. handmade and beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, but they're shitty cups. Um, I was at <laughs> On show- principle, you're like, just throw them away. <laughs> I was at a show the other day, and I was like, there was these these cups that were like, that I've had since literally last year of that show, um, the Backyard Craft Show. I still had wow. yellow cups from that show, and they just look so fucking terrible. And I was, they just had this whole box, and I, all these vendors were around me. I was like, do you want any cups? Here, take some cups. <laughs> <laughs> I gave away like 20 cups in like 10 minutes. Because you changed um, clays, right? You were using like a white clay last year when you were doing the yeah. craft show. And you had like really bright colors. I don't remember yeah. where the glazes came from, but. They were Gravesco glazes. And now I have okay. some completely different colors. But yeah. Um, but uh, I started, when I started selling my pots, I think I sold a mug for $18 Oof. in 2014. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I only went up to twenty five. That's the highest that I got to mugs. I think. Because you don't really keep lines of mugs. I mean, you have the badge mugs that you were doing, the customized mm-hmm. kind of badge ones. Those never yeah. went above twenty five either. We made it might have been twenty seven. Um I know I don't think they actually did get above twenty five. I think they were twenty three. I was selling them at the height of the badge mug situation. Wow. And yeah. But I do feel like I have improved so significantly that the price now makes sense. Like I was learning so much, you know, um, through that time. Uh, maybe I'm just like one of those people that needs to learn through failure, which is actually totally true. But the best way yeah. to learn in any situation. That's true. Yeah. So how do you mainly sell your work, Aletha? Mostly online. I've been, um, well, since I've been in business through all of COVID, everything has had to be online because you're not allowed to see anybody. So I've joined up with a few shows that have traditionally been in person, like craft shows. And since mm-hmm. they pivoted to be online, they've put everything to uh, like Shopify websites or whatever else, and they'll format it so they launch their website. Everybody can come shop for however long, and then at the end of the online event, I go wrap everything up, buy the orders, and deliver it to them. And they deal with all the shipping and putting it together with other people's stuff. So is that it's a, a really cool order, concept. or you you give them all of your stock that you want in this online sale? So I've already made it just because it's pottery and it takes a long time. So I make it, I take the pictures of it, I write the descriptions, I send that all to the people who are organizing this thing, along with a ton of other makers. So um, Case and Holiday Market, Free Willow Market, Pride and Prejudice, Pride Not Prejudice Market, they've all been doing kind of different things about this in my area. So they'll, they'll build this website with myself and a bunch of other vendors with whatever pictures and descriptions they've put together. And each artist has like a little section in the website and you can search, like if you just want to search homewares or blankets or whatever, you can search that way too. But in these ones, you could also search, say you wanted to look at Aletha Bean, then you'd find me and you could shop with me and all sorts of other people. It's like a tiny mini Etsy that's only up for a weekend. And at the end of it, then the makers will bring all their stuff that did sell. They'll get like a rundown at the end of the weekend and um, deliver it to the organizers who batch all of the orders together and then send them off to wherever they're going. What, um, what, how much do they take? It depends on the show. Okay. So er, anywhere from 15 to 30. And they usually have a, it's not bad. It's not bad. And there, there is an application fee, but it's okay. It's just fine. 
that's not bad for the amount of work that they're doing. And it sounds like you've been very successful at at them, haven't you? I've done okay. Yeah, I've done all right. It looks like it's a... You're, the Kingston Holiday Market's the main one you do? I feel that like I see been, that quite yeah. a bit. And that's... Yeah. Is that like a monthly, bi-monthly? It seems to be more like a an event kind of thing. So there, they used to do just the holiday market, so that would be a wintertime thing. They would stretch uh-huh. it out over a few weekends, but it would be in person. So in 2020, they were like, well, all right, well, we can't do that. So they pivoted, and it went so well that they also did a valentine's market and then a mother's Day market and then a midsummer market and i joined in with all of them and they've literally made it okay for me to be alive right now yeah (laughs) not to do their horn too much but it was they deserve horn tooting they've been wonderful that's fantastic yeah it's kind of like a a, the consistency the customers come back over and over and they know that they're going to see different people as well as some of the similar same people and then yeah and they, they've even made it a rule a couple of times that you have to bring new things. That's you can't what show them... up with the same stock that you've had every single time. Oh, yeah. I was going to yeah. say, that's what the multi-level marketing wishes they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's part of it, too, is that everything has to be handmade. I'm sure you could have other markets with the same format that is like the MLMs, but these ones that I've joined in because it's important to me, they've made it that everything that you submit has to be made by you. And as I love it, that. As it should. Great. Yeah. As it should. Plus yeah, it, it sure. opens our customer base up too, because you don't have to be local at all because you're shipping stuff for the most part. Right. Exactly. They ship all the way across Canada. Okay. Wow. Shopping in your jammies on Vancouver I, Island and get something from Kingston, Ontario. Okay, I think I missed that. So they actually ship everything and yeah, you they just ship deliver it, they it to them. Yeah. Okay. I just I would, pack it all up and then the, I drop it off at their place. Okay. And then the customer already pays for the shipping and stuff. So the shipping cancels out, but mm-hmm. the percentage is kind of going to them for the legwork they're doing to put stuff on the website, maintain it, take care of and orders, give you a list, ship stuff oh. out, pack it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a ton of work. They've shown what the old, they organize it in their house because everybody's working from home right now. So yeah. they've shown pictures of what it looks like when all these vendors, and sometimes it's like 60, 80, 90 vendors that are dropping their things off. And Whoa. their basement is like neck deep in boxes. It's incredible. It's a lot of work. Yeah. If anybody in the United States wants to do that, I'm game, but I'm not doing it. You're not going to sell in it, or you're saying you're not going to host it? I'll sell in it, but I ain't hosting it. Yeah. Fuck that shit. I mean, that's a lot of work, yeah. But hey, they, they're working their money off, right? And then, you know. Well, they do get a percentage, and they should. They should get a percentage. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. A lot of work. Yeah, yeah for sure. Wait, yeah, we never the sh- asked... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Some no. of the shows I do, the only one that's kind of like that would be they would take 20%, but... They're basically just doing checkout for you and then bagging it up and whatnot. The the table fee for the show, that's the Queen City Clay show. Yeah. And the table fee is like 25 bucks, so it's basically nothing. You show up, you set your table up, it's inside, all that stuff. The only thing that does kind of suck is you have to put stickers on every single thing with your last name on it. And I have like... 150 200 pieces on a table and i've got to put stickers on every single shot glass every single spoon rest that kind of sucks but that's a pain in the ass you know what you know what so really yeah you know what really speeds that up a double blind pricing gun <laughs> <laughs> that's true it's a good investment you have mm-hmm. a very specific spot that you want the sticker to go into you have i mean, to take it off the gun and put it on the spot anyway I'm a little particular, apparently. <laughs> I don't. It seems like it'd be. I hard mean, to I always took it off the gun gun anyway. The of a spoon, a shot glass. Huh? But wouldn't it be hard to put a pricing sticker right on the bottom of a shot glass? Is it? No, they're very easy. But um, I would always kind of like take them off anyway. The point is that it's printing them. You know, you can just click it to print them each time. I don't which know. Is real nice. Handwriting. I only do like one of those shows a year, so I just bite the bullet and just do it. But. Yeah, 
if I did it more, it would it'd be worth something like that, maybe. But yeah, for sure. Oh, um, <clears throat> I was gonna say that we never asked each other how our days were. Aletha, would you like to start? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I lounged around until about noon. That was pretty great. <laughs> and then uh, just recently, my partner and I dragged all my stuff out to the deck. So I've been throwing outside the last couple of days, which has been fantastic. So I went out when it was, uh, oh, yeah, the noon thing was because I had to because I didn't get sunburned. So I waited until the sun moved into a position that I could oh, be in. Okay. Chris. That's why. That's it. Yeah. Because you're as white as mashed potatoes, but with pepper. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. That's it. (laughs) So I went outside and I threw on the deck for a few hours. And that's great because the sun just dries things up immediately. Love that. Yeah. And then I went and did my mom's hair and my brother's hair. And then I saw a neighbor cat. Good day. Good day. You had a neighbor cat visit. Yeah, that's great. Do your, do your cats like sit on the other side of the door and like see them and they're they're jealous? Yes. Yeah. So I have three cats and Pancakes is all of like five pounds and she's the feistiest little jerk ever. And I love her so much, but she would absolutely attack something right through the screen. So she has not <laughs> met outdoor cat because that would be a bad time. Uh, Vincent, our youngest cat, he's a. Uh, super friendly super floppy he goes outside all the time and he's kind of fine with that and we did not expect him to have any sort of reaction but he saw a backyard cat through the screen and his tail he's a short hair cat his tail got so <laughs> poofy it was the size of his hips and we were like oh well backyard cat you better watch he's out ex- he's a little excited there mm. yeah so it's exciting to have a, a whole other outdoor cat because ours don't yeah. go outside all the time. yeah that is cool I really wish that Lloyd was an outdoor cat. Maybe he'd be less annoying. Because <laughs> he would socialize when you're not there? Yeah. Because Babs is just like, I want nothing to do with you. Babs is like, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, Shorzy. <laughs> <laughs> was Babs an outdoor cat before she came to you? Yeah, I think so. Well, no, I think she was an indoor cat, but we found uh, Sarah found her on the porch her porch she like came up and she had like fleas and mites and um and she's like yeah she was like the sweetest most docile thing and and there was communication between the old owners and sarah and she was like they were like she ran out of the house and like ran away and and sarah was like bullshit (laughs) (laughs) If she ran out of that house, that's because she fucking hated you. <laughs> like, <laughs> oof. <laughs> Seems super yeah. affectionate to be running away from things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she will run, but, like, she's such a loving cat. Uh, can you please tell the listeners about your head f- headset? Because uh, Oliva looks like a, a secretary right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, my headset it is a one ear headset to paint you a picture, and the one ear goes over and the other one goes above, and I feel very um, suave in it. And it came from a place called Treasure Hunt, where I think people leave their garbage. I think. I don't know. I've never been in. <laughs> and you know what? My it partner sounds brought it home fantastic. for me. It. it sounds fantastic. It's lovely. Yeah, it sounds It has good. a microphone it... that comes up in front of the face. Love that. Yeah, I mean, that's quintessential <laughs> one ear headphone right there. Yeah. Is it Bluetooth though? I don't see a cord, so yeah. that that would be the no only cord. other thing that would that would add to it. Oh my god! If he paid less than fifteen dollars for that, I'm so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> There's no price tag on it. I don't know. I don't know what he paid, but I'm impressed even if he paid. Okay, but okay, 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 Aletha. Um, we need to you find just, out. You need to just wear this in a video, like I don't just know. Just to look professional. Just, just to be like, just, take me seriously. Just, I have a headset on. Just for the hilarity. Like, don't even bring attention to it. Just, like, wear it. <laughs> if... <laughs> no, no, I don't no. Know. It would just okay. be hilarious. I don't know. If... Oh, here's the thing. We don't know the price of the headset. And as you can... You've described it. It looks like a classic secretary headphone set um, from, like, the, the 
early 2000s. And um, <laughs> if you can guess the exact price, and we will get the price from Aletha's partner, if you can guess the exact price, and we'll put the um, we'll put a little box when this episode comes out. Um, so that's Lindy or um, Ashley put a box on our stories with the questions <laughs> thing. And if somebody, somebody, if somebody guesses the exact price, I will send you a shitty cup. Wow. This is excellent. Mm-hmm. Nice. So I'll even pay for the shipping. I'll take a selfie to be part of this oh. with my beautiful. Oh okay. yeah. You have to take a selfie here. I'll take a screenshot. You, right have, to now. Give, yeah, you oh. have to give somebody a little. <laughs> And the thing is, I don't know that they know this. It wasn't bought retail. It was bought at a thrift. Well, you said thrift store, so there's no telling. Oh, this is prices. perfect. I don't know. It's like an overstocks place. I've never been in. I've literally never been in. Apparently, you shop there it. all the time. I had no idea. It's kind of mm-hmm. like a. It's that's kinda great. Like a, it's kind of like a fast food window kind of headset too. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. why I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, thank Excuse you. Me, how many nuggets McDonald's. would you like? Ten nuggets? Here's your eleventh nugget. Hi, can I take your order, please? Two bowls coming right up. <laughs> okay, pause. So the okay, speaking of eleven nuggets instead of ten, um, my favorite thing on dating websites is well, one of my favorite things, there's a lot, actually, um, uh, that <laughs> I think is hilarious is that people are like <laughs> Describe yourself as a relationship. And they're like, in a 10 box chicken nuggets, you get 11. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> want 11 chicken nuggets. I want 10. I want what was what was promised. I don't yeah, want What the extra. fuck does that mean? You're I'm, way more than you. You're, I, you're extra. That's what that means. I don't sense. want you to lie to me. I just want what was promised in this, this agreement. You know? Like... <laughs> That is a fair thing. Also, also, if you have two children in the back of your minivan and you have a 10 pack coming out and there's an 11th nugget, all hell is breaking loose. That's a riot. That is a mess. That's a you're just eating that bad boy. That's a tax for mom. (laughs) You just pass that right back up here. Don't even deal with it. (laughs) Don't even deal with it. (laughs) They should ruin my day at McDonald's. I'll caveat this is saying I don't even have kids. I just know. <laughs> That's all right. Wendy's, Wendy's nuggets are better, anyways. I like McDonald's oh. nuggets. Oh, shit. we're having a nugget I like thing. Here, I feel like geez. the McDonald's nuggets are too dry looking. I don't know. Uh, but how do they taste? I don't know. <laughs> I've only had them like twice, but you can't say. You I've don't. had them. I'm just saying, comparison wise. The Wendy's ones are way better. You know what? The are next time they come out there, right now? especially spicy. Does Popeyes mm. have nuggets? Popeyes isn't comparable yes. comparable because it's a chicken restaurant, so it's not. Um, you have to compare it to like Burger King, Burger or King, or I don't know what a Canadian comparable would be. Is there a Canadian comparable in like fast food? Like, what's the top of the food chain fast food that's not in America? Tim Hortons, maybe. Which is they not serve food? food. They serve food. It's not the best. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Tim Hortons. I'm so like, sorry. All is that Canadians. like getting a sandwich from Starbucks? Kind of. They have Tim Hortons in Detroit, actually, in Michigan. But um, yeah, it is definitely I was a thing. Tim Hortons yeah. in New York City once, and it was like six square feet. That's true. <laughs> the... <laughs> oh my gosh! It was like is a walk-up like... window or something. Yeah, it was it. You just walk in, you order, you turn around, you leave. <laughs> you yeah. do it quickly because there's all like the other next. comedians behind you being like, help me, I want coffee. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> very strange. But is, 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 is McDonald's like the standard, like here? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I mean, it's I mean, just, McDonald's I love how people are like, like everywhere. I love how people are like, Canada's Canada is so world. different. Canada is literally, there is not even a line. It's just like, you cross and you're like, oh, look, it looks like the same state I was just in. Like, <laughs> but it's not called a state. I think it's Becca. probably it's a called little more different. Else. Oh, do we know what it's called? A province. I want to say a territory. Oh, we have both. Well done. Nice. I want to say the province <laughs> is the bigger part, right? And the territory is the smaller part. We have provinces and territories. 
Oh. And it's not Providence. It's Province. I said Province. Oh, I didn't catch that. Providence. Oh, okay. Sorry. That was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> province. Yeah. So <laughs> what's the... Oh, so they are kind of the same. The exact same. It, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. I mean, you have states. We have spaces that are contained within their own little spots. The same as you have spaces but, contained within their own little spots. But you're saying a territory could be right next to a province. It's not like one is a more general term and then one's like inside the other. So the provinces are like Ontario, and Quebec, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, British Columbia, and then all the Maritimes that I don't want to say really quickly because I'll probably mess it up. So sorry, <laughs> Maritimers. And then there are also territories that are north, like the Yukon. Okay. I believe Northwest Territories is outdated now, but I could be very wrong on that. Uh, Sorry. Mm. Everybody up I learned Northwest Territory. Anyway. Um, hmm. Now I'm on We're potters. We don't know geography. Um, <laughs> oh, it looks like it's more of a legal. edge of Canada. It looks like it's more of a legal determination. Like a. Yeah. By law or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, basically okay. same thing. Ryan, how was your day? Uh, so my funny story of the day, <laughs> work was good. It was hot as hell outside. We it went was. for a run, and I was exhausted. Uh, I'm glad we cut the backyard yesterday. Ra- Rachel and I yesterday we split up the backyard cutting. I was like, I'll cut the bottom half, and you can cut the top half. So, that was fun. You have a riding uh, mower, right? Yeah. No, we still we still have a push mower. We're waiting until we update the back patio and then we'll get a my father-in-law so my father-in-law did landscaping for like 30 years so he knows his shit with landscaping so he's like you need to get a z-turn like the the ones you like s- sit on i i think sit you on stand, stand on them you stand, you stand on them and then you like turn them and i'll tell you what my landlord at 201 has one and every time he's mowing he looks like he is in literal heaven he's like <laughs> He's like just jamming out to his music and just like mowing the lawn. And it's like, <laughs> You're like anyway. who else needs their lawn cut? Um, <laughs> yeah, so he's all he's all on telling us we need to get a better mower. Um, yeah, we have not used the riding lawn mower in the garage because it's like two and a half years old or at least and hasn't been used. Uh, it's it's more than two and a half years old, but it's been sitting for two and a half years, and we've yet to figure out what's going on we're gonna sell that and we're just gonna buy one so i'll ride it you'll ride it i don't even I... know if it starts. we'll figure it out i don't know we're about to sell it to somebody in rachel's family that was over here for the thing oh, okay. Uh, okay, never mind. so yeah we cut the grass yesterday my story of the day was i was just in the studio mixing up some uh i was trimming some stuff and then mixing up some underglaze and there's this there's just like gunk on the top of the underglaze and I was trying to get it down and then I slammed it on the ground and the underglaze shot up into my eye. <laughs> so I had some orange oh, no. in my eye and on my face and that was kind of irritating. So Rachel, do you have me. a, do you have a wash station, an eye wash station that you put your face on? Do you think I have a wash station? You are not OSHA certified. I am not. <laughs> I have a sink in the bathroom. <laughs> And you did but, that last week. He was helping me wedge and he slammed a couple pieces together trying to do slam wedging. And he did it instead of like a sandwich up down. He did it like a burrito side side. And it ooh. went flat right into his face. And it, he like yelled louder than I've ever heard him yell ever because he isn't a yeller. And I was like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> Everything's fine. But it was a very scary moment. Are you blind? Are you okay? Everything's good? Yeah. I'm good. Were you wearing yeah. your protective eyewear? I, I mean, I'm wearing my glasses, <laughs> but it's it like went right up here. Oh no! So oh, sure, I, I didn't oh. I didn't get a photo. I was too like, uh, this is kind of hurting. It was basically top top of my eyelid, bottom of my eyelid, and on my cheek down here. So it was, and then like barely anything out of my glasses. So they didn't really do their job, but those fucking glasses. And the little thing of the underglaze did not come unstuck. So I had to. I was trying to avoid using a paintbrush to scoop it out and mix it up but use your finger i was i didn't want to dirty anything that's why i was slamming it (laughs) (laughs) 
So I have to I say, I'm glad that in my... the middle of this fiasco, you didn't like turn around and be like, hold on, I might go blind in a second, but I'm going to take a selfie. Yeah, I'm going to take a that. selfie. I'm glad you didn't do that. Yeah. Thankfully, that. Ryan's not like, yeah, I, that's... I was going to do that. And then I was like, uh, this is like on both eyelids. I don't think I want to take a selfie <laughs> right now. Don't mess with that. No. <laughs> so I think we're good. So that was my story for the day. That's and exciting. we're we're trying out the new mic now, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, Marbles yeah, on my lap. So yeah. yeah, I got a new arm on the uh, thing, so I'm looking all professional. Yeah, who's the cheap one now, Ryan? Me. 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 I mean, I got the mic for free, so <laughs> I wasn't gonna <laughs> buy another mic. Yeah, but I got you the mic for free first, and. I mean, this stand was like forty dollars. You acted like that was outrageous. This stand was free. free. I know, but <laughs> because I jerry rigged it, um, it's yeah, not for this. This is better than a kombucha bottle. That's true. Uh, so, wow, you moved that. Did you hear it? No, move it back. Did you hear it? No, nope, that was never mind. That's me, and that was the air conditioning here. Just, <laughs> I was like, wow, it just got really quiet. <laughs> like, <laughs> ADHD punch? <laughs> I was going to say what happened in my day today. Okay, really quickly. Um, I've decided at work that I'm going to work until a certain dollar amount instead of a piece amount. So um, it keeps it a little bit more consistent for Rebecca. It keeps it consistent for me. And that way I can budget my time, my money better. And so my, my goal is a thousand dollars a week before taxes. And so, um, how are you doing it before? What? How are you scheduling it before? Were you just doing based on whatever you felt like doing? Yeah. Or like a hundred pieces a day, whatever that hit to. Um, Okay. And so it could be like $1,300, it could be $800, it could be $700, you know, depending on the pieces. Okay. And I still kind of sometimes have it lower because there's just not enough stuff. But um, mm-hmm. I finished everything I needed to finish, and I get a four-day weekend. Nice. I- <laughs> yeah, pretty excited. Does yeah, Rebecca sweet. put up a board of things that need to be done anyway, though? Like whether you decide to do big ticket items, just small ticket items? Um, so each potter, we have a, have you ever heard of Slack? Not really, no. Okay, so Slack, have you heard of Trello? Yes. Okay, so Slack is similar to Trello in the sense of like you can assign cards to certain people. And so um, each potter, we have four potters, so each potter has a list that is for them, like personalized for them. Mm-hmm. So like Sarah throws a certain amount, like certain things, Merritt throws certain things, Ryan throws, throws certain things, and I do. So I get a list usually at the beginning of the week, and it's usually for a couple weeks of things, and there's usually numbers. Like, hey, highest priority is this, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I can, you know, I usually swap around a few things, but if I get like one through five done that week or one through eight done that week, then it's fine. Um, and we're in our slow season right now. So, um, you know, it's a little less pressured to get things done, um, Mm -hmm. just generally. And, uh, so yeah, so I, I hit a thousand dollars exactly. And I was like, fuck you guys. I'm peacing out. Um, yeah. Amazing. So, yeah. And it's like, it's nice. Cause you know, did you already plan your week that way? Yeah. You just started on, you started on Sunday this week. Monday. Monday and you oh wow. Okay. Three days. Three day week. Wow. Three day week. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. I hit um I just had some higher priced items this week, so yeah. uh but I uh I what are you gonna say? Um Nope. What oh, what were you gonna say? I don't uh-huh. know. You forget. <laughs> okay. So we just. I think that's was, amazing, though. Three days was, and you nailed it. That's great. Yeah, because normally yeah. you don't throw bigger items. So. Oh yeah, there's there's these candle warmer holder thingies that are like five bucks, which are like insane. 
Like they're a good price for what they are. Um, because you can sell that shit for expensive, you know? And, um, and, uh, yeah. And there was just like some four, three, there was nothing under a dollar or there was nothing under $2. So yeah, it just worked out really well for, uh, this week. It doesn't always work that way. Oh, what I was going to say is I used to work in the painting business and, um, I've learned from that, that when you, um, when the like the slow season comes, which we're in a slow season right now, you know, typically between like March and, you know, J- June is when the slower seasons are because it's not Christmas and there's no holidays. Um, that time uh, you really need to take advantage of, you know, like in painting, a, the slow season is personal time. Or yeah, you're in your personal about, time. Yeah. Okay. Like. In in uh in painting the slow season is winter and so like they would always be like you know we relax in the winter and we fucking kill it in the summer and so that's kind of how my outlook is is like if I know that we're like not in a a huge worry to get things done I'm like sweet we're gonna like take it easy and ride this out and then once it starts getting busy I'll be here you know I'm mm-hmm. ready but so. with the with clay she's so you all aren't necessarily rushing to get things finished, but is there still working enough to get a lot of bisqueware? Cause oh, you yeah, know, yeah, there's yeah. going to be demand. Okay. Yeah. 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 And like, well, and we dropped also, you know, there's like been a lot of shifts. So we dropped, um, the biggest client that we had, which was also the most chaotic client, which is also the most like ridiculous client. And so, um, that chaos and that like last minute ness is not there anymore. So we're oh, like, relief. yeah. So we're just like, you know, we have to build up to, she has to build up to that in sales. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been like a lot easier to just be like, okay, we need this in two weeks. Sweet. Got it. You know, so. Yeah. Nice. Oh, we were going to do, oh, we were going to do a question, remember? We are going to do a question that Aletha asked on She has three questions. Our, three questions. You saving up questions in the backlog? From you. I just asked so many, I forget. I From forget me. which ones I asked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You put up that question box, and um, I'm like, I'm on it. Here we go. <laughs> let's go. The first, beep, 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 the beep. first question you get to answer with us, okay? Okay. It is question. What's your favorite birthday cake flavor? Do you even like cake? Oh, and here's a doozy. When you've got cake and ice cream happening at the same time, do you use a fork or a spoon? And is it on a plate or a bowl? The burning conundrums. Aletha. I think this was Ryan's birthday. This is why. The cake. Oh. <laughs> it was. That I think sense. it was. All right. Uh, okay. I don't know. Whatever someone hands me, I'll take it. <laughs> That's okay, okay. But if somebody was You're like... Right. A, if somebody was like, Aletha, I'm going to make you a birthday cake and I'll make whatever flavor you want. What are you going to make? Chocolate. With chocolate okay. icing? With cream cheese ice cream. Cream cheese. Cream cheese mm. and chocolate mixed together. Like cream cheese <laughs> with some cocoa powder and then on the cake. Yep. Wait, caramel? You can... Any caramel? Ooh, I wouldn't be opposed to it. A little okay. drizzle. Sounds good. Good addition. Nice. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. And there is Becca. Okay. What kind of cake? Oh, my favorite cake is rainbow chip cake. Um, specifically funfetti? Betty Crocker. <laughs> <laughs> rainbow chip as in funfetti, or is that a different name? Okay, funfetti is Pillsbury. Rainbow chip is Betty Crocker. There is a significant Same difference. Same fucking thing. It's not. <laughs> It's not Ryan. Not all right. What's well, the cake might this. be the same, but the frosting. The frosting is where the differences lie. Funfetti is fucking sprinkles, and you mix <laughs> the sprinkles in. And rainbow chip frosting has little rainbow chips. I do Thus, like the rainbow chips. I, the I do. Okay, I was talking about just the. Okay. Wait, do they call the frosting funfetti too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Anyway, that has always, I don't know why, honestly, I don't know why 
I have always loved rainbows, but like even in my food. Um, but yes, that's my that's my favorite. That's your go-to. Cake. <laughs> that's Ryan, my, your favorite cake. My favorite cake. <laughs> my favorite cake is probably carrot cake with um, cream cheese frosting. Oh yes, that's true. I love but, carrot cake too. I, I mean, the thing is, some carrot cakes if you're making them from home. Like they're not going to be as good as like getting it from a from a restaurant or something. So if you're not if as good would, at making carrot cake, if, you have to have finesse. I mean, you got to make it like legit. I don't know that I've ever. I might have had one legit carrot cake handmade. That's not like from a restaurant. But uh, let's make one the next time I like, come. Challenge accepted. Um, <laughs> but if I it's like a, a box, recipe, if you want one, super good. Oh yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Okay. If it's a box cake, though, I would probably just go with like red velvet i think with uh probably cream cheese <laughs> the disgust in my face <laughs> i'm sorry i don't i don't love red velvet oh, <laughs> i hate red velvet <laughs> good thing you weren't at our wedding then because that was our top tier of our wedding cake so fuck you both well, that's only supposed to be for the groom and bride. That makes kidding. sense. That makes sense. That was only for us. <laughs> you. <laughs> you might have liked the bottom okay, tier. The other, the other two tiers were marbled, so it was like chocolate and vanilla, which was good. Mm, yum. And I think it had white icing. And then there was strawberry. Mmm, yum. I think this is why I like it when people have cupcakes for their wedding, because there's like 15 different flavors, and you can just... Wow, your yeah. face and all. So good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One time I made um, 300 cupcakes for a wedding. Oh. Wow. And they were s'more cupcakes. S'more okay. cupcakes? What does that even mean? Like a chocolate yeah. cupcake with a with marshmallow on top. Marshmallow and... on top that was roasted in the, the oven. Ooh. Wow. You know what sounds good? Show. What if you did a little graham cracker crust i think i did a graham cracker on top oh yeah that's why i like cheesecake i like the graham cracker mm. i encountered someone once i've clearly put it out of my memory who because i was horrified they didn't like the graham cracker crust they just they just scooped the cheese right off top what the heck <laughs> i was so confused <laughs> so good though you know what's Come funny on. is that my um, mom makes this lime pie it's a ice cream like a frozen lime pie and it's lime custard uh like a lime thingy on the bottom and then and then um whipped ice cream on the top and it's in a graham cracker crust and for the longest time i didn't like the graham cracker crust my because my brother didn't like the graham cracker crust and then i like tried it one time and i was like what a mistake. What a mistake. <laughs> like all these years. How many graham cracker crusts have I missed out on? And now now I'm like, can I please have half graham cracker crust? Mostly lime and then the tiniest bit of ice cream. <laughs> I'm with you. That's how desserts should be. It's just all crust. <laughs> oh man, if they if they had like the bunt cake and you filled the bunt cake with like graham cracker crust and then you had oh. the that would be good. And then you get be pretty graham though. cracker everywhere. Ooh. Yeah, if the bunk cake had like a lot of fruit in it. Like fruit frost so fruit stuff. fruit cake? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I may have just made up a, a dessert in my mind. <laughs> I kind of like want like a bunk cake pie, but like, and like an upside down everybody stay tuned for cake. Becca's four days off that she has coming up because she will be making a fruit bunk cake. Because she has time on her hands. <laughs> but since I'm too cheap, I will not be buying a bunt cake pan, so it might be in just a square pan <laughs> with a cup. Fruitcake bagels totally coming works. at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love when you go off when you're cooking stints because you're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm probably going to ruin it anyway. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, God. I made a lasagna. And it lasagna. always turns out amazing. I made a lasagna the other day when I had COVID. So I had COVID and I made the lasagna on like the last day. It might have been the day before my birthday because I've 
I know by now that if I make something that I've never made before, not to make it on a day that I want to be happy because like, there's a good (laughs) chance that it's going to be fucking terrible. And so I made made homemade pasta and then a white sauce lasagna. And I was like, Oh, I don't have to bake the noodles because the last time I made a lasagna, I used red sauce and I put it in the oven and the red sauce just cooks the noodles because it's got water in it because of the tomatoes. And um, that's not what happens in a white sauce lasagna. So the noodles, <laughs> the noodles were like par baked and they were fresh pasta. It was fresh pasta. So it was like really gross, was it but it's really soggy good. It like absorbed all the moisture. Yeah. It was like the, the flavor was like, hello. It was like lime, basil, ricotta, <laughs> like, wow. And, the the pasta just fucking died inside. <laughs> That's sad for you. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait, okay. <laughs> now I'm so curious. The cake and the ice cream situation. Do we use a fork or a spoon? We'll start with the fork. Is or the, the ice cream hard? Is it soft serve or hard? It is hard out of the tub. Fork. How hard is that though? Hard. Depends. Depends. If Depends it's on what kind a of ice hot cream. day. If it's melting, no I will use a spoon. If it is yeah. not melting, but I eat really fast. I mean, I feel I've like ice cream body. <laughs> fresh out of the <laughs> freezer isn't necessarily like rock hard, though. That's yeah, true. It depends that on true. your freezer. We'll say that right from the store all... that's been in the freezer for oh, yes, overnight yes, yes. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say spoon. I might get both. <laughs> like, I might start with fork, eat cake, and then go to, 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 um, oh, and I'd also for sure put it in a bowl and then maybe drink it when it melts. Yes. <laughs> so why not a oh, spork? You, do. you don't the have last a... few bites of the cake. You just, what about an ice cake cream cake? Ice cream. What do you eat an ice <gasps> cream cake with? A fork. Has to be a fork because they're those so are, hard to eat. Those are definitely fork. those are definitely rock hard. You almost need to eat it with a knife, and you can't eat that on a paper plate. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with an ice cream cake? You just have a bunch of drinks and get your friends over and hand them all whatever utensil you find first, and don't even bother cutting it. You just stab it until you can eat it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why are they so frozen? Like, why is it the heart like a brick? I don't know. It's like a diamond. <laughs> I don't know. Shine bright like a diamond. Um, <laughs> the, the they're really hard because if they weren't, then they'd melt. <laughs> but but can't they be like two degrees cooler? Like two degrees warmer? <laughs> Spin up faster, Becca. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> they like, have to be zero degrees Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like if it's frozen, it's gonna be lower than zero. Like it's it's harder than that. <laughs> it's negative five degrees Celsius. Yeah, it needs to be closer to like. <laughs> negative two degrees celsius so it can actually thaw within like 30 minutes oh <laughs> so maybe it's when like, you try to eat them on a hot day the whole outside is just liquid the inside's still a rock maybe it's what? for that drive home so it doesn't melt at all on the drive home that too you're supposed to take an ice cream cake out 30 minutes before you serve it to an hour an hour to 30 minutes when just have a puddle on your counter? What? <laughs> 30 no. minutes is not long enough to melt it. That thing is a brick. <laughs> it's like you can kill somebody with an ice cream cake straight out of the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine that on a criminal report, a police report? <laughs> Weapon of choice, unclear, but giant puddle of cream I mean... on the kitchen floor. <laughs> <laughs> the evidence melted. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be somebody that's cut themselves trying to cut an ice cream cake because it's so hard. Me, me, me. I 
I have definitely injured myself with dessert a lot of times. <laughs> if you were expecting pottery today, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I attempted. I attempted. There was talk of bowls. I tried. <laughs> I'm go- and I'm going shallow bowl. I'm going like pasta bowl. Oh, that's a good possible. Yeah, for sure. Good choice. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, snow cones. I feel like snow cones are in the like the genre of of ice cream cakes in the frustration because like it like you put the ice on the top or the flavor on the top and it just fucking melts to the bottom. Like there's <laughs> like yeah, You're talking about the like traditional like liquid rock hard snow yeah. cone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are also very frustrating. Ooh, there was this one when I was a kid that was right up the street. It was in like a little bitty shed. It was like a eight by eight shed, and they had like the old. They had one of those like you turn the little thing in it. They oh. they have blocks of ice, and then they have the machine that shaves it. Wow! So they would shave it into a cup. It was called Snow to Go. Snow to Go. Wow. And you you'd walk up there, and they'd have you know the the boards. That they'd open the little windows and they'd have the all the different names of the flavors on the board i would always get it's rainbow nostalgic. or tiger's blood tiger's blood tiger's what? blood is tiger's uh, tail, maybe tiger's blood tiger's blood i want to say it's strawberry and coconut that sounds a lot how the fuck does it have blood? anything to do with a tiger no idea <laughs> <laughs> It was fucking good. <laughs> I want to say strawberry. Right, like, I'm not cherry. questioning this guy in the hut. I'm just going to have a snow cone, thanks. <laughs> I want tiger's blood. <laughs> oh, it's tiger's blood. Tiger's it's not blood. tiger. Okay, tiger's blood is red. Okay, it says strawberry. flavor knows tiger's blood is combination of watermelon, strawberry, and coconut. Oh, shit. That it's, sounds good. It's so good. It sounds good. Unfortunately... <laughs> That place closed down like three years ago. So, yeah, probably because they were importing endangered species and putting them into snow cones. Yeah, they, they found blood in their snow cones. They had those. They had those. <laughs> uh, those canisters, kind of like you'd see a uh, uh, blue curacao, like canister or like uh-huh. the puree. That's what they would have the syrup in, and they'd just like dump it on there. Oh, so good. How do you say? Okay, he says syrup. How do you say s- syrup? Do you say syrup? Syrup. I say syrup. syrup. You said syrup. Well, I said, I said syrup for the sake of that, but I don't sure. know. Sure. Simple syrup. Oh, are there different different pronunciations depending on what kind I of don't, syrup it is? I don't know. If we're making a tea <laughs> drink, I'm saying simple syrup. Okay. Syrup. Simple syrup. Syrup. Maple syrup. Got it. Yeah. <sighs> wow. <laughs> what is this episode? Yeah, we, we have not touched that part very much, have we? What about Italian ices? <laughs> Italian ices are go to oh what about the the um i don't know what they are the asian ice ones have you had those with the um uh with the mochi? sweet and condensed milk on top no <sighs> i have not tried this but it sounds really good where do you get that um usually at like in college we used to get them and you'd go to like asian restaurants um could you imagine going to a restaurant and you order a dessert and it's like a scooped snow cone? I'd be down. Sounds yeah. good. <clears throat> Asian shaved ice is a uh, delicious. Delicious. Okay. Anyway. Delicious. Um, <laughs> it's got four cups of ice, strawberries, mangoes, red beans or paste, uh, grass oh. jelly, lychee. And one cup of sweetened condensed milk, and you pour the sweetened condensed milk over it. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Those flavors sound good. I don't know about the. I don't red know about beans. the red beans. What red what beans are really popular in Asian um, food for like desserts. Wait, is that red bean paste? Like beans? Mm-hmm. That sounds gross. It doesn't end up tasting like beans though. It tastes oh. like mm. strawberries almost. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure how it is, but I I have I've tried it before, and it's pretty good. Yeah. So adding a little protein in their think. dessert. Mm-hmm. Well, That's smart. I didn't think of it from that option. Yeah. Me neither, and that makes and it light, almost healthy. And lychee. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're probably using real fruit, so it's healthier than getting just sugar syrup. <laughs> syrup. <laughs> syrup. <laughs> Do you say syrup, Becca? I say, say syrup. 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 Okay. We're all on the syrup boat. Okay. Yeah. We're all... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and that's been dessert talk. And that's been dessert talk. <laughs> There's other questions, but they're for us, and I feel like we're interviewing you. So I feel like we answered the second here, one. Fine. We answered the second one last last time we talked, Becca, about the backyard craft show. Mm. Oh, the buddy show. You should start a buddy show in Canada, Canada. I'm going to get kicked out of the United States for saying Canadian. I've always said it like that. Um, I love it. Uh, uh, tell, tell me again what the structure of this backyard buddy show is. Like you go, you set yourself up, and then you you call somebody who knows nothing about your work and no. have them come and man the booth? No, and no, no. The same with their booth? No, no, no. The buddy show is structured on the buddy system in the sense of... You- <laughs> You go to the bathroom together. <laughs> you go to the bathroom together. <laughs> no, um, you hold hands in line. Um, so <laughs> it's um, at table. <laughs> Just frolicking through fields, holding hands. <laughs> so the buddy, the buddy show means that you have to sign up with a buddy. So, like, if you had a friend that was a vendor. And you knew about their products, you would sign up with them. So me and Ryan would sign up together. So like, we're gonna sign up as Ryan and Becca. And when we get to the show, Ryan sets up his booth how he normally would, and Becca sets up her booth how she normally would. And then you literally swap places. You man each other's booths. So you have to know at least a little bit about the person because then you can actually sell it. Because you know how, like, whenever you're at a show and you're like, have you seen this pot? This is so beautiful. And it's, like, your friends and, like, you sell it, like, real good because you're, like, stoked about it for them. Yeah. That's the concept. I totally know that feeling. And I also know that people usually undersell their own work. So when they get there and someone's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. How much does it cost? And you're like, I don't know. Just take it. Whatever. It's garbage. So you won't do that if it's your friends because you're also excited about it. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that it's very, very appropriate to be able to upsell in the buddy show. <laughs> you know, this Makes sticker sense. tag says twenty five, but I think it's worth thirty five, don't you think? I think you, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I and love that. I think yeah. I think the people in the buddy show should be across from each other, not next to each other. So like in a line. So it's not like, hey, they're wondering about this certain thing. Can you yeah, tell them if about that certain you have thing, to yell person. across so there's a comedic aspect to it. Hey, Brenda! <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be something when like a sale gets made, so it's like, yeah, across the. Everybody has their their own call. Kaka, kaka. <laughs> Someone brings a cowbell. <laughs> Love this. <laughs> I'm game. That sounds fun. Doesn't it? I think it would be enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. Be a good time. I'm trying yeah, to think who, who I would go with. There'd be lots of, there'd be so many people. Great. I know, yeah. like, everybody who sells stuff knows somebody else that says sells stuff, too. Like, even if they met them at a show or whatever, and you're just like, oh, your stuff is the shit. Or, like, I would want to pair up with somebody who's, like, sold earrings or something. Because I'd be like, dude, these are the fucking shit. Like, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially you've made earrings enough to know that, like, when they are the shit. So you can say that honestly. I can. I can see that. My ear yeah. is also infected. I forgot to add that into my daily account. Oh, no. Like the outside where piercings happen or the inside where hearing happens? The outside, but I think it might be moving to the inside. Um, okay. <clears throat> the, uh, yeah, I I got it double pierced. My friend double pierced it. And the piercing's fine. It's just that I had an earring in there that was maybe a little bit too small. And it, like, 
it hurts real bad. So we took the the earring out, and I put one of my friend's earrings in that's titanium, so I'm hoping that it helps. But if the earring's we'll too see. small, wouldn't that mean it wouldn't irritate it because it's not like... No, it was like too thin. Oh, like it wasn't deep enough cl- to go all the way through, so you're like too close. Your ear. Yeah, it was like pinching my ear, so because it got swollen, and so um, yeah. And I have an issue with like I'm like oh I'm just gonna start playing with this because I'm bored, and so it can't it never gets better. Ouch. But yeah, when your ear tries to swallow the piercing. Yeah. Exactly. It's terrifying. Yeah, that started mm-hmm. to happen. I was like, I gotta get this fucker out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Expel that thing from your life, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of uh what kind of like clay community is there in Brookville there? Brockville. Brockville. Uh there's a lot. There's a lot. Um how how big is Brockville? I don't know I guess, everybody. to start because I don't know much about it. Brockville is population twenty two thousand people is that in canadian yeah <laughs> <laughs> you caught me i was like oh god what is the conversion for people <laughs> i didn't know there was a conversion <laughs> <laughs> yes. Twenty-two thousand american and canadian people <laughs> Brockville is situated right in between Ottawa, which is Canada's national capital, and okay. Kingston to the west just a little bit, and Montreal to the east just a little bit. So Brockville is kind of right in the middle of a bunch of big hubs. You go a little farther west, you get to Toronto. So we're we're smack dab in the middle of a bunch of metropolises, except we ourselves are more of like a small city, which is lovely. It's a good size. It's big enough for a Walmart. It's small enough to know your neighbor's name. And... I think that's just about right. That's the same size Monroe was, and it's lovely. Yeah. It's small enough that if you needed to get across town and you didn't feel like calling a cab, you could still make it and be on time. And I love that. You could just walk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't take you five minutes. It would take you maybe 45 minutes, but you could do it. Right. Right. Mind to end. Oh, so, why is it why is it pronounced Brockville when there's two O's? There's not two O's. What? You just you just pulled your on. questions here today, Becca. B r o c k v i l l e. I accidentally said Brookville. Is there also a Brookville? It. Probably somewhere. I, I accidentally said Brookville uh-huh. because there's a Brookville, Ohio, or Brookville, Indiana, real close to us here. I'm so. it. Oh, this is Brookville. Oh, oh there is a Brook, there is a Brookville, and I looked it up, and you're a lot farther away than I thought. <laughs> We're pretty oh. far away. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. a little bit, a little bit north of Syracuse, New York. Yeah. Oh, you're Brockville like near right Vermont. We're right <gasps> across the river, right across St. Lawrence River from New York State. So if you go downtown in Brockville and you look across the water, you can see New York State. It's right there. <gasps> Oh. Was there a war there? Was the War of 1812 in your city? Holy history buff. Yeah. Yeah, it was like right down the road. Yep. Oh my god. Okay, so when <laughs> So when I was traveling, <laughs> when I went on my road trip, I went to um I went I probably saw your city like across the way because I went up to northern um uh, New York. I went to New York, and then I went to Niagara Falls, and then I went over, and then up Rochester, and then up, and I went to this town that had like so much War of 1812 history, and then I got shit faced with these two guys because it was the day before duck season started, and <laughs> all of the like they just bought me drinks, and I was drunk by 8 p.m. and um. Excellent. They were like these two old guys and we like ate food and drank beers because they had $2 pints. And then I slept in my car. That's the only time I've ever driven drunk. And I drove a block to a parking lot. Um, yeah. Good time. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you're okay. 
Glad that block wasn't full of dangers. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have driven if I had had to drive really far, but I needed to get out of the two hour parking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, I'm very curious where you were. Did they talk amazingly? Like, was their accent just the best? Was it so good? I don't know, I don't know but I remember really enjoying the town. And, like, it might have been Alexandria Bay. Yeah, that's, it was right that's next right to the close. water. That's, yeah, that's across, not too far. From, just about across from Kingston. It's right there. Yeah. So Rockville is between two bridges that go across, and the one in Johnstown is just a little bit east. The one in uh, that way across from A Bay is just a little bit west. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's, you were right that's up the awesome. road. I should have come to see you. <laughs> yeah, because I remember I went. I think I went. Oof! I went in Ver. Went to get into Vermont. I went on a uh, little ship. Um, Ferry. <laughs> Yeah, those. I went on a ferry. <laughs> so that's fun. How fun. Uh, How that fun. Place is oh, I wish I knew you were there. That would have been great to just like wave across or something. I know. Well, that was a long time ago. We didn't know each other then. Yeah, I guess. Wait, this was the one that you just went on like earlier in the year? No, no, no. This was in 2012. Oh, yeah. No, we definitely that's, did not. Know each other a then. little bit ago. Yeah, no, this is when I this is when I left my house in Colorado and traveled around the country for six months. So Wow. And I lived in my car. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) The people in Vermont are very the ones up north that are French are not very nice. Um, I did learn that. Is that in Maine? Are they French then? No. No, it's Vermont and New Hampshire when they're really north, but um, they weren't nice to me. But, you know, they could have Cause changed. Because they're, they're, like, right opposite of Montreal. So yeah. So they speak French. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, why is there a Canadian like, flag in yeah. the United States? <laughs> a lot of those towns are so border towns that, I mean, the families have been there since before the borders have. So you've got like, yeah. well, even in my family, I've got people that go across constantly. My dad and my grandpa were both customs officers in their working lives. And so you just get to know people and you're like, you know, yeah. hey, Jim, hey, Frank, and, and whatever. It's not a big deal. And you have yeah, families totally. who literally live across the road from each other and they're in different Yeah. Places. It's very like mixed, uh, mixed countries up there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I could totally see that. I mean, that's kind of how um, at, in uh, Vancouver it is, too. Like, uh, up towards the border, Washington and Canada, you know, people go across so quick, so much. So, like, they work in the United States and they live in Canada or, or the opposite, you know. Yeah. So. Um, Here, too. Makes we sense. We have people that go across to Augensburg constantly just to go to work or come back and forth. That's, yeah. You know, that's um, Natalie from oh great now i don't know fledgling studios um natalie from fledgling studios she lives in canada uh by right by niagara falls somewhere i'm sure be <laughs> um uh, my ears ringing now great my ears gonna fall off um <laughs> no uh, so uh she lives like right by Niagara Falls, and uh, when she ships stuff to the United States, I think she goes into Rochester and ships them from Rochester. Oh, it's nice. cheaper. It's significantly cheaper. I can yeah. send things to the United States for a fraction of the price that I can send them up the road to Canada. It's really frustrating, actually, because I do everything through Etsy and I ship through Etsy too. So when I'm buying shipping labels through them, like I'll give you an example. One day I shipped a pinch pot, so it's like yeah. seven centimeters wide. It's three inches. It's little. I shipped one to Ottawa the same day in the same box that I shipped one to Texas. And it was like $16 to ship to Ottawa and it was $9 to ship to Texas. Oh my God. So do they use like USPS? I, like where you are? I think that's are? what it does. I, I go through Canada Post, but I think once Canada Post transfers it over to the, to the state side, then it goes through USPS. So but, that's why um, it's so cheap because it's like it literally just has to like hop over the border. Maybe, but Ottawa is only an hour drive away. So why you know would what? it take so much more money to get to Ottawa than it would to get to Texas? Texas is, it, is a long drive are, here. 
Are there other fees that you all have with your post of like when you're accepting retail items or something, you have to pay extra? I mean, you're staying in the country, I think so it seems customs, like it's but I think that has to be something that the, the person pays who is on the receiving end for customs if it's crossing the border. I just don't. But yeah. in Canada, why would that happen? I don't know. I don't entirely understand it. How is the Canadian Post like run? Is that is that a whole that's like government run? I'm guessing, right? Kind of like United States Postal Service. Kind of. Not. It's kind of. I don't think it's exactly government run. I think it's kind of like tangentially government run. Okay. Like highly sponsored by the government somehow. So I maybe see, the the yeah. fees are just more, but it seems if you're still going through Canadian Post to get it across the border to U.S. and then go from there, it seems like there's no reason it would be cheaper. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's really weird. No idea why. Hmm. Is there- I um I find it interesting that well, I would imagine it's the same with Canada Canadian Post, but uh, is it Canada Post or Canadian Post? Canada Post. Canada Post. Canada. Okay, so I would imagine it's the same as Canada Post. I was very close to my mailman <laughs> um, in Monroe. His name was Ken. Uh, and <laughs> and so we would talk about stuff. But um, one time we kind of like conned the USPS thinking we they thought that we shipped more than we did. So we got some representatives to come to our store. And um, they like enlightened us on a few things that uh we find to be frustrating and i would imagine that canada is the same because you know when when the pony express started which was what the usps was originally it was just letters it wasn't packages as much you know like people were sending letters and the united states postal service is for postal like for mail it is not for packages like parcels it is is it is for letters and um, they've had to, like, significantly restructure the company um, in the last 10 years or 15 years since Amazon to accommodate all the the packages. And it's – I don't – like, it's just a whole fucked up system because of that. Like, but people Amazon, still – Well, are you saying because in the early days of Amazon they actually went through USPS? They still I think, do. I think a lot of nowadays I have an Amazon Prime truck pull up to my house and drop packages. Not. Oh, I guess that's true. Um, they kind of. I think they kind of mailed. It. They have their own mail service because they want to have that immediate delivery that the postal right. service can't keep up with. Didn't that change like maybe three years ago, two years ago, something like that? I mean, yeah, probably in the last five years or so. We start. They start ramping up. I'm sure it differs based on what part of the country you live in and who yeah. can handle the service and who can't. Yeah. Cause all of my prime packages came through the post office, but um, yeah, like they were just talking about how it was, it's been such like an overload of packages and like UPS, you know, is, is literally made to ship packages. So they're set for that system and the United States postal service, like everybody hates the USPS because you know, like they fucked up my package. Well, they're not even supposed to be delivering your package. So like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and their prices are competitive to like make it worth it, right? Yeah. Like the prices are yeah. good, but still kind of. I, I always, what... if I can, I ship through UPS. But, but I mean, they they've got to make a lot of their money based on packages. If they didn't, yeah, adapt, now they do, and they would have died because. The, for sure. If they said, hey, we don't do that. You've got to go to another business. Like, mm-hmm. who is yeah. sending letters? And if they're still relying on stuff, letters. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people I send in their... letters. But I, who does that? Oh, mail, I do. Credit card Should company, we be pen pals? Your bill, bills. I would love to be your pen pal, Becca. But yeah, yes. it isn't something that you and I alone can keep Canada Post and USPS afloat <laughs> just from our letters. <laughs> Gotta send packages um, sometimes too. <laughs> I tried to be a pen pal with Val's daughter Molly, and she still hasn't sent me a letter back, and I'm kind of bummed, but it's fine. Oh, she's a Molly. Eleven. She's she's a teenager. <laughs> she like, what's your email? Okay, well that makes sense. Um, yeah. but oh, what was I gonna say? You Highly said something. <laughs> um, you're you're right. They would have like completely died, and um, god damn it. 
Because, I mean, most of the companies that are sending stuff out, like junk mail and your bills and stuff through mm-hmm. energy, like, those are probably paid for. Par- like, the the shipping of those is probably sort of paid for. Like, I don't know that I get, like, an energy bill with a stamp on it. Or maybe it's... Maybe it is. You don't, I don't see know. the stamp it's like because the somehow. stamp is electric. So it's yeah. um, it goes through a machine and it stamps them and then it tallies up how much it's paid in postage and then it sends it out. Yeah. So it's like a post postmate.com or whatever that kind and of thing. And then situation. everybody's doing like paperless now, so Yeah. I still get paper as much as I can because then I give a big fat disgusting envelope to my uh, accountant at the end of the year. And and that's that. I don't want to print anything at home. Here you go. Here's my three inches of paperwork. For reals, though, I always preferred paper. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I can just shove it in this fucking, like, drawer. Mm-hmm. Also, I'll forget to pay my bills if I don't have a piece of paper telling me to. Mm, like 8,000 emails a day from all the different things. That's a good idea. That's, that's the smart way, Ryan. That makes sense. I just don't think of that. <laughs> oh. God damn it. So, I, you know what? I, what, I was gonna right say, <laughs> what I was going to say was actually kind of important, but I can't remember what it was, but I got a glimpse. Wasn't important was, enough. Clearly. Um, oh, I remember. Okay, so here's a fun fact. If you're ever going to commit mail fraud, um, <laughs> if you... <laughs> what a starter. All right, let's like go. We are not... <laughs> We are not professionals. <laughs> I'm just saying, I was watching the McMillions um, <laughs> show on HBO Max. Oh, I didn't watch that. It's so fucking good. And um, they basically, the reason that they could indict all of those people is because every single one of them sent the ticket, the like thing saying, I won, through the United States Postal Service. So it was a federal crime. But if they had used UPS, they would have never been able to be indicted because it was a private company and it doesn't like they can't be federally like prosecuted because it's not a federal crime to cheat on a game. Hmm. You're talking so above my head right now. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's always an issue because I use USPS, which is a government. Yeah, so is this like, like a let's lotto? say, um, well, you know how the McDonald's has the games that are like the the Monopoly games. Okay. Canada doesn't have Monopoly. Sorry, Becca. <gasps> no, no, we do. I just don't play. I, I just forgot made that, that up. Okay, well, back in the nineties, <laughs> back in the nineties, they um. There was a huge scam, and a bunch of people um, got a hold of all the winning tickets, like the million-dollar tickets, and, like, this one guy was, like, selling them to people, and then those people would send them in, and then they would fake that they got the tickets, and so the reason that they were able to be processed, they figured it out because of a leak, like somebody uh, that was connected called the FBI and was like, It was called Nikki Leaks. Mickey leaks <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so uh, you know there's like a lot of stuff to the whole story which I won't go into but because they shipped their tickets through the United States Postal Service and which is a federal company they were able to federally prosecute them if they had used UPS it like McDonald's can't really do anything. Because it's not illegal to, like, cheat on a game that's not part of mm-hmm. the government. That is mind-blowing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. So another reason to send your business through UPS is what you're saying. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> private, private, private. Jeez. Remember, you can't lose your rights in a private company. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> they're already gone. <laughs> That's great. So what what's your what's your breakdown of like how many people you're sending to in Canada versus US, Aletha? Oh yeah, 
that's a good it's question. mostly Canadian. That's a good question. It's mostly yeah. Canadian. On Etsy, it's kind of half half between Canada and US. But uh, mm-hmm. all these shows that I've been doing, they're they're Canadian based, and they only ship to Canada. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. What's your least Plus, favorite because part of the it process? Is... Oh. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No what process. What process? No, nope. continue. Of making pottery or of like the entire oh, job? <laughs> I'm doing what's it. Your least, Changing the subject. Here. What's your least favorite part of making pottery? Glazing. Why? Yeah, it's uh, uh, my hands are very dry, and there's a lot of buckets, and it's overwhelming a little bit. Mm. So Ryan started wearing gloves. Yeah, me too. Me too. Makes a big difference. Yeah. Now I got now I got the soft hands. Yeah. I don't. Which I don't know why I didn't think of that because I wore gloves when I did color every day in my life for 15 years. So I don't know what that was about. But I remembered that I own really nice gloves and I put them on my hands and I'm like, oh yeah, these are things. Yeah, I'm sure that hair so shit's pretty gloves. toxic. You probably can't get your hands on that. Not not every day of your life for that many years. Yeah. No. That's tough. Hmm. Yeah, okay. so, so the gla- glaze made the, a big difference, but in the glazing, are you including that underglaze wash stuff? Because that's done at bisque too, right? That's done after the bisque. Um, no, I do that with bare hands because I'm washing it off with a bucket, and the, it's kind of yeah. rough, mm. so I'll break my gloves. So, yeah. and I discovered recently when you're wiping off, if you use a magic eraser, I'll say this for all the listeners out there who do that wipe back, magic erasers are actually magic. They're made by elves they're so good anyway <laughs> wait no please elaborate i want what, to know what's and what kind of yeah. co- or does your clay have grog in it like is it gritty no, at all Ryan, or is it pretty smooth we're talking about the magic eraser no but i'm saying it matters if your clay is gritty <laughs> and you're wiping away on a gritty clay than a clean no groggy clay no right? that makes a huge difference if i were uh if i were like burnishing everything and then carving then it would wipe back really easily but i don't i don't know i don't Garnish. I don't like to. And I or like rib like it. it. So, Do you rib it? Yeah. Uh. Well, not really. No. I just sponge it. Just, just a regular old sponge rooney. And then I bisque it after I've carved it and everything. And then I do the wash of the underglaze and I wipe back with a. I use a grape sponge to get the most of it off. And then that last little bit of haze that I usually just destroy a million sponges. I've been using a, a magic eraser the last few loads. Holy moly, what a difference. I, nice. I need it, stocks and magic erasers now. Does it, do they go away quickly? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Like one okay, base so, load is like three sponges, but worth it. Okay. Okay. If I you go on Amazon, you can buy 12, $12 worth and it's like a hundred of these melamine sponges that aren't actually magic erasers. They're, they're melamine sponges. 12 Canadian or 12 US? 12. <laughs> Either way, it's not three dollars for one sponge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found I found an, an um, a thingy on the interwebs, and I wonder. I have an idea. You should try this. You know those SOS pads? Okay, SOS pads, like the ones with soap in them. No, no, no. The ones that are like the green ones that are the um, the scrubby ones. Yeah. The gritty ones. Yeah. The gritty ones. I don't love those. They don't know. They don't That's work rough, well. though. Okay, go go on. What, yeah. what are you doing with the SOS? Nobody pads? loves those. Anyway, any, <laughs> anyway, or whatever. <laughs> you can get cheapo fucking sponges for real, real cheap. And um, you can make your own magic eraser by using um, water, heated water, a teaspoon of borax, and a little bit of baking soda. So what do you mean? You submerge that in that SOS mm-hmm. pad? Yeah. It would probably get that off and it wouldn't wear down as much. But I because... think you'd have to resubmerge it in the solution of the borax and water and baking soda over and over again for something like I do anyway, because the whole mug, whole piece needs to be wiped back. But oh, you'd have right, to because it. you're squeezing it out. Yeah, to get and it's got to be really clean for that. her to glaze on top of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So once I do the white back, I usually just do a clear glaze. I don't do colors over top. Right, right, right. That you makes sense. A little bit, yeah. 
But yeah, listeners out there, magic erasers. Good stuff. That's a great tip. Yeah, that is good. good. Thank you. Yeah, I would have never thought of that. I recently oh. did because I was trying a bunch of different sponges because I was frustrated with it. And I got some contractor sponges, the growth sponges that I was saying, and then also cellulose sponges because I don't love how many pieces of plastic I'm putting out into the world with those little sponges breaking up into a million little pieces. Mm-hmm. Some cell- like some natural cellulose ones. Garbage, by the way. They work great on dishes, but I'm so sorry, Mother Nature. Not going to (laughs) work. And then I tried the magic erasers and a couple other ones that were just from the dollar store, but different types. Yeah. Blew my mind. Blew my mind right there. Wow. 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 My mind is like now just wandering. Yeah. I mean, it looks like your, your clay doesn't look like it's very gritty at all. Just looking at you, Carvin. It's not. I use... Uh, Tucker's mid smooth spec. So that one, I believe, actually is a mixture between regular clay and a little bit of porcelain. So it's mm-hmm. quite soft. Um, there's no grog whatsoever. It's very smooth, very buttery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've tried to use the groggy ones. I did Raku one time with my pottery teacher, and it was fantastic, except I felt like I was going to like lose my fingertips. I've it's heard so that. Rough. I don't know how people do that every day. Good for them. Yeah. Wow. So, wait, did you not use the, the big tongs to pick it up? Yeah, but when you're no, throwing no, it, the first throwing place. it when you're making the pottery oh, super okay. like, yeah, it's the got a ton gritty. of grog. Yeah, yeah, I felt like I was trying to throw with asphalt or something. It was awful. <laughs> so, so awful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, do that again. horrible. <laughs> does uh, does that clay do well with handles for your porcelainous kind of, or do you have issues? It seems to. I haven't had a whole lot of issues. Sometimes there's a little bit of a surface crack that. Uh, it's cosmetic. So those mm-hmm. ones, I, I usually just say, like, it's it's fine. It's just not quite as pretty. Uh, you do have to dry them pretty slowly. Yeah, yeah. I see you. I see you're kind of, like, pre-making them and then forming in one of yeah, your videos. Yeah, I do a slab, and then I cut them up, and then I stick them on. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice, nice. I've done pulled handles a few times, and I don't love the way they look with the way that the rest of my pots look. Because they're kind of smooth. So then a a cold handle is kind of like a glob on the end, which is very nice for what it is for other kinds when you've got a more organic shape to it. But for whatever reason, I like them smooth. I mean, for your slab ones, they look look the same one to the next, which is nice because it it just builds that consistency. Whether your design is on there or not, you can tell that the handles are the same from one to the next. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I tried to to a handle that was pulled from the mug like Ryan does and I did it on my mug and I was like this looks fucking terrible like <laughs> like you know it just didn't fit it just didn't like mm-hmm. fit you know I love I the way it looks on yours Ryan like the way that you have the Thank throwing you. lines and they're, they're kind of thick on the bottom and they're just the, the yeah. whole shape of it makes little sense but mm-hmm. yeah on mine it doesn't seem to work I don't know yeah no yeah I totally agree because I love Ryan's handles so, um, yeah. I also love that they're kind of, when you look at it from the top, they're a little bit thicker against the mug wall, and then they get smoother, smaller mm-hmm. towards the actual hand part. Yeah. And I've tried to yeah. do that a few times with mine, and then I look at it, and I'm like, no, no, don't like that. Nope. <laughs> Never mind. Take it off. My favorite <laughs> handle to make um, when hand building, like instead of slabs, is to do a coil and then flatten it out with um a just a rolly tool because then it has like a nice curved outside um that that's my favorite way to do a do like a a hand built handle for sure that's really comfortable when you're holding yeah. it that nice cuz it's around it's kind of rounded mm-hmm. on the edges yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah so i, I, I hate it when there's like a sponge and i smooth the edges yeah, yeah I hate exactly. it when there's like a sharp side I had a few back in the day that like one side was like really rounded and really nice because I would always do this in in between my thumb and my yeah. index was like really smooth. And then the other side was like kind of pinched. And I was yeah. like, oh, I hate this because it's like right where I hold it. And it's too <laughs> sharp. Yeah. You do have to make sure that you actually use your mug sometimes to realize what you hate. Yeah. Because I've had that. that. I've had a couple that I've made that I'm like, this is such a work of art. It's so beautiful. And then I go and try to put anything in it. And I'm like, I hate this. 
This is awful. <laughs> Never ever gonna sell this one of these piece again. Piece of shit. <laughs> When I fucking plant in this thing, it's not worth copy. <laughs> I think that's why I'm a little iffy about like the the coiled handles that some people mm. have. It, it's got to be the right thickness of coil, I guess. But I think a handle, round handle is a sin against God. It it just it just it, like a perfect cylinder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah don't like love a tube. Like a tube. Yeah. Like also some of the, the newer, ones that are like a perfect circle stuck to the outside of it. Some of the yeah, some I of the trendier, the look, but... trendier modern ones with a. I do like the way they look, but that ergonomically seems like a f- like. Mm-mm. I'm gonna drop it, unless there's yeah. two of them, one on either side. Then I'm okay, but just For one, sure. I feel like the whole thing's gonna just slip and mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel about round handles too, because like, where are you gonna like rest your thumb, and like, what if it like moves from side to side? <laughs> <laughs> like what happened <laughs> yeah because it's gonna slip around yeah there's a whole art just in handles apparently <laughs> handles are from the devil <laughs> i have one cu- <laughs> i have one cup that i kept um from like when i was selling all those cups online you know uh back in the back in the 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 um the early pandemic the earl the earl demi- the earl Dick. <laughs> Not when you were still in Dick. Washington? Oh. Yeah, when I was still in Washington. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, um, and uh, I like pull it out sometimes and I use it. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, I'm so glad I stopped when I stopped because I feel like I was like, it. that was it. You know, like. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever make mugs again? Or are you like, cups no. are it, that's it. Ooh, no, mugs for mugs no more mugs. Oh, people, you better Thanks appreciate data. those Becca mugs because you ain't getting one. You're not getting any more. I know. I I had somebody email me last week saying, hi, I bought a mug in Leavenworth, Washington in 2015. And uh, we loved it. And it just dropped and it broke. And I was wondering if you had any more. And I was this like, "This is a big question. Do you replace the thing that you already made?" Ooh, the conundrum. Yeah, and I was like, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it had a long life. Twenty fifteen. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah, for reals. Like it had. It was like a PNW mug from twenty fifteen. And I, and like, I was like, sorry, I don't, I'm not even in the Pacific Northwest anymore. Like, I don't even live <laughs> there. <laughs> but um, I was like, uh, good luck. Oh, and also they wanted it for Mother's Day. That was, it oh. was, um, they emailed me, that's what it was. They emailed me the Monday before Mother's Day and said, I'm wondering if you have any in stock uh-huh. of PNW mugs. That I could have for Mother's <laughs> Day. And I was like, That's nah, fine. not it. At least like, they worded it like, do you already have them made instead of like, correct. can you make that things nice. from scratch and mail them across the country? Yeah, that was appropriate. Days. Thank God. But no, I won't make things that are old. That like somebody, and I think that that's something that I wouldn't have said no to probably three years ago. Like, um, just recently... Somebody? Is that for your own sanity or is that mostly for because yeah. you feel like they're going to be picky because they want something exactly like it used to be because well, they yeah. have these memories with this thing? and Yeah, it's like like that one somebody um, who was a friend back in the day, um, now an acquaintance, but she messaged me and, and I made her a 18 piece set. OK, oh. she has a family of four. So okay. I made her 18 dishes, 18 plates, 18 small plates, 18 bowls, 18 oh small gosh. bowls. I think. And she broke, wow. she broke one and it's because they have large family dinners like for Thanksgiving and stuff. And she broke one of the bowls. I think it was 18. She broke one of the bowls and um, emailed me like, two months ago and was like, can I get another one of these bowls? And I was like, I can't like, I don't have the clay. I, I do have the glaze, but I don't have the clay. 
And no, <laughs> I don't have the measurements. <laughs> Even if you send me a picture, I'm not going to get the shape right. Like there's, it's not going to be the same. And when did you she make like, them? Mm, 2018. Yeah. You're, I mean, and, your throwing style, like imagine trying to make something that you made four years ago in the same throwing style. Yeah. Well, thankfully, I think it was like the wide bowls. But yeah, it's just like, God forbid, you know, you buy something at Sears and it goes out of stock. Like, that's the same thing. I think that might be exactly it, is that people hope that being handmade, if as long as you're not dead, you should be able to recreate it. And, yeah. Uh, that's not how it goes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Even I mean, like, like making I a set I of could. bowls, like one week to the next week I, i'm like i can tell i made those bowls at the same time that i made this set of you know this set of 15 bowls looks a certain way and if i make my next set of 15 they're not really going to look exactly the same right just because of the hand motions and the rhythm of what i did and i'm not super yeah. particular with like the depth and the width and stuff and measuring that's i just do it based on how i'm feeling when i'm throwing the, that set so yeah. they don't really I, look the same i think that's what's so beautiful about handmade is that they're all a little different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by... And they do end up by, being kind of limited. It's true. I'm surrounded by all, mo, a lot of the pots that I have made because Rebecca's doing a photo shoot tomorrow. And I'm looking at these bowls, like the Becca bowls that I make. Like, sometimes they're wider and sometimes they're, like, not as wide. And, like, I am the first one to admit that I am not as consistent as I could be. Like, I could be a hell of a lot more consistent. Um... But, like, my other co-worker's Merit, she's like a fucking machine. Everything she makes is exactly the same. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, and I guess, I don't know if I don't care or if it's, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I get them pretty damn close. But, but still, like, you know, a, a quarter of an inch you can tell when you have mm -hmm. a whole set. And so, yeah, but yeah it's the same up. thing. Like, even, even measuring every single time. You're going to have differences. I was just thinking, like, if you threw those with a pound and a quarter three years ago, a pound and a quarter now that you threw with would be bigger, probably, because you're way better at throwing than you were three and a half years ago. Maybe. It depends on how hard the clay is, how soft the clay is. But that's what, I mean, I have all of my measurements. Like, I have my shrink ruler and I measured everything. But, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't imagine it turning out good. At all. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably break it. Definitely not exactly. Anyway. Yeah. No. I like the, yeah. uh, I'm like kind of in intentionally a little different from one of the next because I feel like it keeps me sane to not yeah. nitpick over the small details. Because mm -hmm. if, yeah. Because I'm like, like, kind of like the people that have issues with something and they're like, how do I save this? It's like, if I had to worry about the little details of like one little piece, compared to the next one like i would go crazy yeah. that's why it's like uh, a little wabi sabi but a little bit like i know this is good for me to not worry about that <laughs> so. yeah it's um it's funny that like terry uh or the person that was our old client that was so much like so particular that like had the biggest account, you know, she was very, very particular. And because she was so particular, I like really tried to make everything the same. And they always ended up being fucking different. And I was like, Rebecca, can you please just fucking tell Terry not to worry about it? Because if I don't worry about it, then they'll turn out way more similar than they will if I do. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like just like not You're putting not the pressure. Yeah, just like not, and that's, I think that's why I don't stress about the little differences in Rebecca's because I know she doesn't care that much as long as the shape is there and they're like pretty similar. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you ship it out, you find the ones that match. And, um, but I mean, I've gotten definitely gotten better. But, um, so that didn't improve over time because the customer trusted, you know, the client trusts you over time and you get no, a little bit nuts. more leeway. Okay. <laughs> I had a little bit more leeway with certain customers because they're like, yeah, they know that they're going to sell. So they don't worry about it and they leave it to me a little bit more, which yeah, I, no, this I, is, makes it more enjoyable. This is an extremely rich human that. being. Yeah, yeah lot, that's true. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting more. And, and sometimes you can spot it a little bit with like wholesale. 
questions and stuff, the way they word things and what they're asking for, you can yeah, kind of yeah. spot that it's going to be, oh, oh, they're going to give me some freedom. And they're not saying, like, you can do whatever you want just as an afterthought mm-hmm. comment. Yeah. I started putting that into when I'm talking about wholesales. If people are approaching it with me and they want to say, I want a whole line of something, I will tell them I work better if I have creative freedom and I don't have to make the same thing. Again. Yeah. Mm. So I mean, I had that's to, good. Yeah. I had to give a wholesale yeah. client like a line sheet sort of with like the dim- approximate dimensions. And I was like, oh my gosh. Ugh. But yeah, I would do that. I'd be like, I can make it was like mugs. Approximate in the photos i sent were like they'll look kind of like this but it's not gonna be exactly like this but mm-hmm. as long as they kind of get the gist I yeah think... i might lose my marbles if i had to it's do like that. i don't have every single color of every single form to show you mm-hmm. like yeah a cross section and you could pick from a chart like i don't know i feel like if you have to get that specific then you you could shop at walmart i don't know yeah. So, so yeah, part of I mean, me is, is having that inconsistency a little bit. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, yeah, but I mean, also like when you're doing something like Rebecca, it really does matter to have things that are like the same. You know, it depends on what you're doing. Like, are you doing production pottery? Are you studio potter? Like, you mm-hmm. have to define who you are. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Like what you said, you're like, this is what I'm good at. And I think that that's the biggest thing when you're talking to, like, a wholesaler, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, being, like, honest about who you are and what your boundaries are at the very beginning. To be like, here's the deal. This is, like, this is what your expectations should be. Mm -hmm. And don't, like, don't fucking, don't fucking, like, tell them things that you know you can't fucking do. Like, do not, like, make yourself better than you are. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Some people don't accept that though. I I have noticed that sometimes if I if you do say straight out like I'm not comfortable with this, I don't think I've got the skill set for this. Some people are like, oh, I believe in you. You can do it, sweetheart. Oh. Oh yeah, and then you're okay. like, okay, but just so you know, I warned you. <laughs> we have it on writing, like in a recording. No. <laughs> it might take me a year to get this, and it might still yeah. suck. <laughs> and hopefully, you don't yeah. agree on a price already if you're like iffy on it yeah luckily i'm still new enough that i have not had any bad experiences so I'll keep that's up good that. let's hope it stays that way fingers crossed <laughs> fingers yeah. crossed on that one yeah <laughs> do, do you have any wholesale clients or do you are you kind of scoping it out sometimes i have a couple i've you? got uh yeah they they've come to me so far i haven't gone to seek any out yet which has been I've been very lucky. That is that is a super lucky thing to have people come to me and say, hey, I would like to give you my money. Yeah, yeah that is nice. And okay. they can just come on a yeah. random Tuesday and they'll and then you're like, can I yeah. handle that? Do I want to <laughs> handle that? Yeah. The biggest wholesale order I had was uh, there's a shop in the Corth Lakes region that ordered. Um, it was like 24 mugs, 24 bowls, all different. A bunch of incense holders. Uh, What else did they order? A bunch. A bunch of things. Lots of things. And it was huge. And I did say, like I said to you, just I I work best if I can just wing it and have a general style about it. But Mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, you go ahead. You just do whatever you do. And I ended up making like 30 of everything and showing them off and saying, of this, which ones do you want me to omit? And that worked out really, really, really beautifully. I love that. That was great. And I hope all of my clients for the rest of forever are like, yeah, just do what you do. We love nice. it. Nice. <laughs> and the items were sellable That's that nice. you did not um, sell to them, I'm guessing, right? Like, it was just your everyday uh, yeah. line of work. You just made them specifically for them. Yeah, it was just just a big old box of stuff. And I was like, this is what I got. This is what I came up nice. with. You good? And they were, and that was great. Yeah. They said they sold the mugs within like a month, so that's great. Nice. Four mugs. Did you? So did they? Did they reorder? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't put it together yet. They said sometime in May, so I'll I'll get on that. Oh, nice. Working towards that now. <laughs> it is sometime in May, right? It now. is. Yeah, mid- yeah, exactly. Mid-May. They're they're in my damn boxes. <laughs> they're they're going. <laughs> 
Nice. Yeah. Are there certain <laughs> forms or certain pieces that you won't do because the price point just doesn't work for you because of the effort and time and stuff? Uh, like flasks, letter crocs. No, I, I meant like in her typical <laughs> line of work. <laughs> I've never attempted to make a butter crock, and I don't think I don't. ever will. Because listening to the two of you be like butter crocks. <laughs> 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 I don't. Think I will. <laughs> no, no, I had I don't think so. I try to price accordingly to the point where sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I would pay this much money. Like a like, berry bowl, I charge like fifty five dollars Canadian for a berry bowl, or or up. It's at least that much, and. Uh, that's just because there's holes and stuff and you have to glaze them kind of carefully so you don't have the color going all over the place. Do yeah. you, um... <gasps> the bowl. Oh my Bowls. god. That's what we can trade, Aliza. I need a berry bowl. But would you prefer a piece of Tupperware with holes drilled in it? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, that is legit something I need. Like, a colander that's like a medium oh. size. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> well, hey, listeners! I'm getting me a cup. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, she was like, "Hey, I do, do you want to trade? Do you want to trade?" Oh, I said, "Do you want to trade pottery?" Because she's she had mentioned that she wanted one of the fancy cups, and um, I was like, "Do you want to trade?" And she's like, "You don't want to trade me." <laughs> <laughs> she said, "You don't want what I have. You want a fucking Tupperware pitcher." And you I was could, like, "That's like, true." <laughs> Could you trade Tupperware with somebody, Becca? I would so trade Tupperware with somebody. Um, maybe. I'd have to be able to use it. That's where I'm at right now. Like, I can use a colander um, mm -hmm. of sorts. Like, I have a small one. Uh, and I only have a small one. I don't have any big ones. But um, I could use a colander. Like, I'm trying to figure out things that I need and you could use. So... Like a juicer, I could potentially use a juicer in my future. We have a couple yeah. juicers here that juicer. you can you could probably take one of ours and try it out and see what you think. I mean, I have one of the foldy ones. It's like it's. I mean, I juice a lot of limes, but um, it'd be I'm fun to have like one, one that I could put like, yeah. I used to make this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> not making those again. I've never tried it. It seems attempting a thing to attempt, but I'm not sure if it would stick with me. I think it's ceramic. Thing. I don't know. You always get a crack in the bottom, always. On the little, the pointy part and mm -hmm. um in the inside. <coughs> um Ryan, have you made the juicers? No, I have not. I find it very um I find it very doubtful that very many ceramic juicers work really well yeah it's it, they're just so specialty too it's like how well for one how often do you use a juicer every day and then Me, but like you know it's fine <laughs> and then use a juicer quite if often, you do yeah. use it every day you probably appreciate a pretty quality item for that yeah and could My a ceramic juicer away. beat <laughs> other juicers I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I think my Tupperware juicer is pretty good. I don't know. It has a little I'm catch gonna thingy. Need, I don't know. You're gonna need to have to send. You're gonna have to send me that picture of that. Um, yeah, like my juicer is, you know, the little squishy one, the one, the handle, you know, where you cut it in half and then you put it inside and squish it down. Mm -hmm. Like a potato ricer, but for juice. Yeah, yeah, like a potato ricer, but for juicing, um, limes and stuff. But, um, yeah, I know that's it. Like, so the problem I have with juicers is that like, you can't have, you do have to have a sharp surface to rub it against, mm -hmm. like moving it. And then ideally you would want to have like bumps on it or something. If it was ceramic that, that you could like really dig in. But I feel like most juicers that I see are very soft in the, in the spiral. You know? Yeah. Because the glaze kind of smooths out all that. Yeah, and that's not yeah. what you want. No. Right? I wouldn't think so. Yeah. So I don't know. I've seen some that are so beautiful. Juicers. Oh, they're gorgeous. 
Yeah, if you want to send us your juicers to get an honest review, we'll give them to Carl. And um, <laughs> Carlos critiques, bringing we'll it back Carlos from the dead. Critiques. <laughs> a juicer edition. I don't, I don't know about this one. I don't even know if he would know what it is. Probably not. He doesn't juice anything. Things. No, they don't. Ryan's dad thinks that homemade biscuits are from the package. Like, <laughs> like he thinks that homemade biscuits are <laughs> are biscuits. I opened it at home, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so the, I love that. <laughs> and God bless him. And honestly, those are some great biscuits. To be honest, like they're great. Um, yeah. and they're warm and they're fluffy, so they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can get behind quick. that. I think that's great. Yeah, Bisquick. <laughs> the one thing the one thing I was thinking about going back to the um the wholesale thing I was wondering about. The the P I see he has a piece of with gold. Like are those things that you can still wholesale? I feel like those would be too expensive to wholesale, but maybe not. Oh yeah. I've consigned a bunch of them. I sent them to Pickle and Myrrh, just a, an adorable little store in Merrickville that sells the best caramels ever. If you want caramels, I'll put them in your berry bowl. I want to sell them to you. So good. I've Sweet. already talked to your mom, Ryan. I'm going to send some to your mom at oh, some point. She's all about the caramels. The caramels. Oh, Ryan's mom. <laughs> if she finds out, if she finds out that we like, like a person, she's like, hi, how you doing? And I <laughs> fucking love her for that. Like she's best friends with Heidi. I know, and I, <laughs> she's so sweet. Your mom's awesome, Ryan. So good. Anyway, I have sold some of the, well, not sell, but consigned some of the gold things with pickle and myrrh, and they seem to have gone really well. I brought in a whole bunch of berry bowls that sold, like, in a day or two, which were great. They all had gold accents to them. I'm skeptical. Personally, I'm skeptical about selling the gold because I personally don't buy anything that I can't put in the dishwasher. So this is the same with clothes or anything else that you have to use an appliance for. Because if I can't if just throw can't, everything in there, you know. If you can't put your clothes in the dishwasher, fuck that <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. <laughs> Stuff that takes extra little bits of love and care. I completely I agree. That. Like a cup I didn't that's know like hand wash only. I didn't know you yeah. weren't allowed to put gold in the dishwasher. You can. It'll just eventually erode and wear off a little bit because oh. overglaze, it doesn't have as much strength as the underglaze. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Overglaze. And yeah. you can't put it in the microwave. No, sparks. You can, but That's bad things will happen. Dude, yeah. the other day I put my, I put like a bowl that had like leftover pasta or something in the microwave, and I just didn't realize that my fork was in there, and it just like went in the microwave. <gasps> it survived, like there was no fire <laughs> or anything. <laughs> it would have been on par terrible. though. <laughs> That's so scary. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. So how much? Is, how much is one of the like thumblers with the gold on it? Do you, how do you determine how to price the gold stuff, you know? Because I hear I it's expensive, but I that, just don't know. Oh, it's so expensive. The bottle is um, smaller than my thumb. It's very small. I don't know how many milligrams that is, but the whole bottle, including the lid, is smaller than my thumb. It costs about $50 Canadian. It's a lot of your money. And you get, I don't know, some projects out of it, but not a ton. It does take another firing, of course. So I price it right. that basically if if something costs forty dollars having gone through a bisque firing and a glaze firing, and then it also needs a gold firing, then that's half again. So sixty dollars. Okay. So that was yeah. how I would do the math. Nice. I was about to say like I was thinking like in my head, fifty bucks at least. Yeah. Okay. No, that's I love my, that. I love it anyway. I love that. You're like, you know what? This is a pain in my ass. And half of that ass is going into this cup. Like, <laughs> it's so expensive. I, That's what uh, I was like. Andrew is so wonderful. He's the one who does all of the running to go get stuff and deliver stuff. So when he went and got this little bottle of gold, he didn't realize what it cost. And I was like, you can get it on this shelf in Amaranth and it's wonderful. And, and he was like, 
uh, this bottle smaller than nail polish? Like, do they have it in one of the containers, polish. like for for like uh, razors at the grocery store? So you have to like get it unlocked at the counter. Yeah. It came in another box. Yeah, it was oh. like it's yeah. so small. Here's a thing to contain it so you don't lose it in the bottom of your bag. Yeah, or steal it. I had to put mine. Uh-huh. It, it's like the small, small one. I have gold in the small, small one. <laughs> I had to put in a condiment cup to find it. That's how small it is. Wow. Yeah. They're so yeah. tiny. I think you can get them in bigger ones if you're a millionaire or something, but I'm not. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to commit to a $400 bottle of nail polish. I cannot uh, do that. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's nuts. What if a cat like dropped it, like tipped it over? Oh my god! Yeah, those must be in a very, very special spot. Wow. Yeah, I'd imagine there's just some pieces you just can't put gold on, or if people request it, like it's really got to be worth it. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna ask half the bottle, and it was like. I should be selling this bowl for $300. This is so much gold, but uh, I didn't because yeah. who's going to buy a $300 bowl? And Somebody. afterwards, I was like, why? Why? Why did I charge so little for this? So, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, I was going to ask you if your partner did work, too, or if you're, like, the bread, like, the, the sole person supporting. We're, we're a team with that. The amount of running cool. around he does to deliver everything I would definitely say that we're a partnership in this. He's been so supportive. Like the dude. No, I mean, like, does he have a job too? Does he have a job too? No, it's outside of Aletha Bean. No. Oh wow. Okay, cool. So of course, this is us. Yeah. Nice. Wow, you guys are fucking killing it. So did you both kind of do the full time together at the same time, and and you both did that when the pandemic hit, sort of, or? He did freelance jobs before and wasn't having a ton of them before anyway. Mm-hmm. So for the, I mean, he was a photographer a long time ago. So obviously photo session stuff wasn't happening when everybody's weddings and stuff were canceled anyway. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he was already kind of leaning into not doing that much anyway. So when I started doing this more, he was already doing a lot for the household as as though I was the one doing the full-time work Mm -hmm. before doing this I was doing full-time work and so he was kind of the domestic one so uh now he's doing the domestic stuff but also doing a shit ton of work for Alita Bean which is really fantastic I don't know how many kilometers you put on the car this month but it's a lot because he's driving auto on case from everywhere to do this so he's putting That's a lot phenomenal. of, is he doing some hands-on stuff too with the work before it's done? Or is it mostly the um, the transport transportation and getting supplies and stuff like that? He does some hands-on stuff too. He does almost all of the waxing unless I get to it first, which I usually don't. So he does most of the waxing. He does most of the sanding when, like, if it's yeah. a wobbly pot, he'll sand it. Uh he is a little, I want, I don't want to say he's more detail oriented, but he's small detail oriented. Mm. So he would be the kind of person who would do things like you, Becca, where he would like stand the crap out of it to make it super smooth. And then I'd yeah. come in and be like, I'm glazing it. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I did all this yeah. work for nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's really no, he cool. He does a lot of the hands on stuff too. Yeah. That's, um, that's, Obviously, I mean, that's a real testament to obviously your relationship is to be able to even work together without killing each other is, um, you know, that's a lot. Yeah, I would say our relationship without getting too mushy for the whole world to hear. But I would say that our relationship is better now than it was pre all of this. Like That's we amazing. Lean on each other a lot more than we used to. Yeah. Or at least I lean on him, the poor guy. It, is that because you were because you all were forced to be like at the house at the same time during like when pandemic hit that you kind of had to figure things out in a different way than you might have in the past? Because I'm guessing doing hair, you were outside of the house, right? So you all didn't see each other as often. Yeah, yeah. I I went to a salon, so I wasn't doing hair in the house, so I would be gone uh, nine ten hours a day, and yeah. Uh, 
And yeah, he has to put up with my presence more. He has to be around <laughs> me more. So let's hope that he likes me still. <laughs> uh, we've been together for like 12 years. So uh, something like that. So it's it's not like we didn't hang out before this. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I think, I don't know for sure, but I think just the fact that we are working towards the same goal and doing the same work is something that we're a little right. bit bonding over. And he can see the work being done. So he's like, oh, shit, babe, you've had a really productive day. Like, yesterday yeah. I had all my pots, like, lined up on the railing of the deck. And he's like, wow, look at you go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that tangible right in front of us, both working towards the same goal, has been good for us. That's awesome. Is that, like, a you're in tandem <laughs> with the planning goals and stuff like that? Or is it is it still ultimately, like you're the one in contact with clients and like, Hey, we got this new order um, coming in and this is the plan for the week. Or is he more integrated with everything more? I am, uh, I, I am 100% the, the front man on that. I mm-hmm. do all of the talking to people online and the deals and the, what we're doing and the, what we're not doing. He does all of the person to person interactions when he drops everything off at the stores. And mm-hmm. at, oh. like, at the end of this market that I did, he, he knows the organizer's husbands who pick things up from the driveway to get things all in the, in the, Oh, nice. Okay. This thing. So, uh, it ends up being that people know him from all the drop-offs, but they know me from the communications. Okay. That's great. So would he, yeah. would he work at a sale with you at a, if you did a tent sale or something at a show? Yeah. We've only done one. Um, Last fall, we had one in Merrickville that was, holy smokes, that place was nuts. It was hopping. We were, I don't know how many people we were expecting, but we were like completely blown away by how many people showed up. Thousands of people showed up to this thing. They were lined up like two kilometers down the road in their cars waiting oh, to get wow. it. It was nuts. It was constant. It was great. We made a butt ton of money. It was so good. <laughs> Yay. And he was there. He was at the tent sale with me and he mm-hmm. was doing like, uh, we had like the little square reader on the on the phone, mm-hmm. so we were kind of taking turns between who would handle the transaction, who would wrap the pots, and, and nice. uh, yeah. Th- since it was such an underestimated turnout, um, a little a little bad thing that they will fix this year because they realized how popular the event is. There was only three porter potties for thousands of people. Wow. So we in line for forty five minutes. And I've got oh some gut issues, gosh. so that was a long time for me. And he uh, just manned the booth completely by himself for that whole chunk of time. So, wow. and it wasn't it wasn't in like a populated area where there's businesses that you could go to small businesses right nearby to share the it was the literally load. In a few. It, was, wow. it was in a farm. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. That's yeah, brutal. But you know, they know next year when they put on the event again. Hopefully, they put on the event again. They're like. Okay, we know we'll have a whole bank of them mm-hmm. because <laughs> well, yeah, well, you don't expect it. And for what they expected, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was probably not a lot of competition of shows and stuff going on, so people. And I would imagine, to do. yeah, and I would imagine Honey Bucket doesn't like, you know, do emergency calls, you know. <laughs> Is that what? What's Honey Bucket? Like oh. the porter? Yeah, I guess. I was thinking sorry. Rumpke, but. Yeah, Honey Bucket is the porter potty company in Washington. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Which is kind of a weird name, Honey Bucket. Um, I was just yeah, thinking that. Like, yeah, there's, that, not ha- there's no that honey happening. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a porta potty company. Yeah. <laughs> I is was it a big ask- yellow porta potty? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they're blue. Um, <laughs> how many? Um, how many pieces do you think you make a day? Like. Uh, when you make like wet pieces, how many would do you think that you would make in a day? Um, well, it depends on the season. So in the middle okay. of winter time, when I'm in my little tiny basement, I've only got the tabletop. That's it. I run out of space. It can hold three dozen bats, and that's okay. that. When I fill up the table, do fucking bad, I guess. So now that I'm outside, I've got the entire deck, and I can just put them everywhere. So. Um, in a day in the winter time, three dozen, that's my limit, unfortunately. And in the summertime, there is no limit. <laughs> it's, it's great. It. 
today, just today, I threw, I, I weighed through and trimmed and got in damp boxes and some of them actually in the kiln, uh, four dozen pieces. That's not so, fucking bad. That's like, wow. Yeah. That's you do good. all the trimming and stuff too. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. And I mean, all the carving is, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whoa, that's, that's like, cause if you're throwing and trimming, you can equate that to basically one and a half because trimming usually takes like half. Does it take about half the time as throwing? Mm. That's the same. About I the do. Same? I do a full foot on the bottom. Okay. So two. So, so it's like and double carving. You know? Carving so is if you another... did 48, you really did, you know, 80, 96 pieces, essentially, because the trimming yeah. counts as a piece, you know. Um, Plus the carving, like you have trimming. to add at least half on top of that. Yeah. Maybe even another. Carving one. probably takes more time, to be honest. Yeah, carving probably takes like. Carving yeah. probably so takes as much as the throwing and trimming combined. I would, yeah. yeah, I would say at least three times whatever she made on the wheel, like multiply that by three, and that's like how much. Yeah. Pieces. Yeah. If I could do just constant throwing without stopping to, to like rearrange and that kind of thing, I could probably do about, I don't know, six dozen in a day. Well, I think you could probably do more if you did that. If you did all that today, so you you started with forty eight pieces and you trimmed forty eight pieces and you carved forty eight. I carve carved off? probably fifteen or so. Okay, so you carved. Okay, and then you carved 15, that's 80, that's probably equivalent to about throwing, uh, let's see, 80, nah, Probably at least 100. That's too much, Matt. <laughs> um, I don't do that kind of <laughs> I was just I know throwing a number out there. It takes me about cause... five, six minutes to throw, and about five, six, no, maybe, maybe four minutes to trim. So about 10 okay. minutes to to throw and trim a, a mug and then the carving okay, depends just, on how serious it is more. So just time wise, and I'm not counting the carving here, just time wise. Um no I am counting the carving though I was wrong. Um plus uh, yeah it's probably like a hundred and hundred and twenty pieces at least that's not fucking bad in a day, yeah. you know. If you were the only one throwing, you could probably get that done in a day. 120. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is not Andrew's bad. tried to throw a little bit. He he's not a fan of that part of the hands-on part. Would he <laughs> uh, would he prep the clay for you? Yeah. He'll weigh it out and uh I'm trying to teach him to wedge. He's not a super big mm -hmm. I don't know. He's not super and it takes some practice, you know, so he's not super good at it yet, but he's getting yeah. there and he's willing to work. And I love that about him so much. So he's, uh, you should he's teach him how to trim. Actually, I just did a charity event. I threw like 25 bowls or something to send off to this, this thing called, uh, empty bowls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they do soup bowls. He trimmed three of them. One of them ended up having like really cool chattering on it completely by accident i kept that one that one's fine i put another one in for my own clay that yeah but <laughs> it's really neat and he was just looking at it like oh i don't know what happened here and i'm like fucking magic that's what happened mm -hmm. <laughs> keep it well piece was probably so, a little bit too dry so. but yeah yeah but yeah the Maybe effect looks good yeah yeah that's great the whole foot has like this really cool wobble to it it's really beautiful oh i, I love it. happy accidents I know, me too. Yeah. He says that um, I make it look easier than it actually is. And so when he sits down to do it, he realizes it's kind of hard. <laughs> people tell me that all the time. And I always respond with, well, if I didn't make it easy, I wouldn't be paid for it. If I didn't make it look easy, I wouldn't be paid for it. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, if I wasn't any good at it, geez, I'd make like three things a day that worked out, and that's not going to pay the bills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, we should go pretty soon, but I did want to ask if you wanted to ask us anything. I had one more question that's relationship related okay, about the fine. partnership and stuff. So <laughs> with the, this is, and this is probably related to a lot of other people that have this situation, but with you both, yeah. and even if you b don't both 
even if you didn't both do the business, like, is it hard to figure out because you're both at home, like when is work time, when is, you know, personal time and Mm. then how to talk to each other in a way that's respectful of like, I know we're in business together, but it's also like, you know, being gentle as a personal side of it. That's a really good point. Uh, I think we're still trying to work on that because we're both still in the mode of like, this is brand new and neither of us know what we're doing. So Mm -hmm. we're still trying to figure that out. Luckily we both kind of just talk pretty gently to one another anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, he never raises his voice at me. And if he ever did, I'd be like, okay, well, anyway, bye. So I think we both know that. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. We probably should sit down and make more of a solid schedule, but we already mm-hmm. had a bit of a rhythm from before when I was working outside of the house. Mm-hmm. So like evenings are always just, unless I'm in the basement working on something, we sit down and, and there are parts of the house that are strictly not for pottery. So if we're both hanging out That's in the good. living room, let's say there's, there's no clay in the living room. We're sitting down. And I think that's helpful too. So maybe it's less about, the mental barrier and more about the physical barrier of like Mm. this space is pottery and this space is not pottery. That's really important when you own a house that you're working out of and in, you know, yeah. when I had, and I'm also terrified of silicosis. So I've heard your stories about having your wheel next to your bed. And that is terrifying. (laughs) I didn't even know about that when I first started, I had that in my guest bedroom right across from my room. So, like that's oh yeah not good. I didn't know about silicosis either. Um <laughs> yeah. There was like an older okay, never mind. Um I'm not gonna say that story. Um because we don't have time. <laughs> okay. Not because it's a bad story, but just because we don't have time. But um uh yeah, I think that it like when you live in a space that you work in, it's so important to like you know, like Ryan's studio is downstairs and like when you go upstairs it is their home you know yeah mm-hmm. and when downstairs some... is work you know yeah yeah and some of the some of the studio stuff creeps over a little bit you know with yeah. the packing yeah. and shipping i'm noticing that it creeps uh, it does creep it takes over it's hard yeah. to find that balance of like okay the only pots that are coming in this room are finished pots i definitely yeah. make that barrier yeah. Yeah, you know, like in process prop pot. I'm not unless I go outside. I mean, maybe I'll take stuff to the backyard and like do stuff yeah. outside, but not yet. But even so, where you are, Ryan, that's still your work area. You know, that's it's still yeah. like designated pretty much. But yeah, I think that is really important, and that's a good that's a good subject to like talk about too, and to like really be aware of your boundaries and like you know make sure that you have like date nights and stuff so that you're not yeah. like. Because, like, Ryan and Rachel are really good about date nights and stuff, so. Yeah, we've been Uh, trying to do. Yeah, you are. That's excellent. We've been trying to do Friday nights or, like, even if we don't go out, it's just, like, if we do something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we'll, like, take it off and, like, not do it because we'll we'll have plans over the weekend to go visit family or go to a concert or something. So it's, like, that's going to happen. I think it's more for us. It's the... um, Cause I'm trying to get Rachel more in integrated into some of the business stuff. And mm, especially can, when you start going full time, are you going to end up being a yeah, pottery so, couple? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know that she's going to be as invested in that part of it, but she's going to be more than she is now just for the mm-hmm. sake of time and like where the time gets spent. But I think it's more about how I um, talk because sometimes I could be very short and direct. That's true. And I'm, I'm not, a witness to that. I'm not as like a, like worrying about people's feelings as much when it's my spouse. They're, when I'm their going their communication through. styles are very different. Yeah. So like, I'm, the way I'm, she wants to hear is not the way he talks sometimes. Yeah. And my my tone comes mm-hmm. across very like direct. So it's figuring out that kind of stuff with the business and that's just personalities as well as you know, if I was mm-hmm. talking with other people, it would be more gentle or, you know, just different. Yeah. Right? 
So well, I think the thing is, you end up trusting your spouse not to not to flake on you versus somebody else that is like, well, I'm not gonna put up with this. Yeah. Um, which but is it's tricky also like because of course you know, your if, spouse is the one you want to be the kindest to. Uh huh. And um, it, it's kind of like if you work with somebody in a business relationship too. It's like. I I would not be as direct with them if I'm not as happy about something or if it's like tell me what you want me to help with and some of it's like I want the initiative to be taken that I don't have to tell you every single thing but if yeah. somebody if it's your business you can't expect them to love it and to own things as much as you want to so Absolutely yeah you know expecting someone Andrew else will to pick say up, very much he wants the, a list yeah, mm. he wants to be told exactly what to do. I have to struggle with that too a little bit. I am I am a little bit more short with my answers than I probably should be sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's something that it's not a relationship thing. That's a personal thing. That's the thing you have to work on yourself. Mm. That's the thing I have right. to work on myself anyway. I can tell you that I will never, ever, ever be in business with somebody I'm a partner with. Ever. I never thought I would either. It just sort of happened this way. I uh, no, and I think I it's great. My that job, you're, yeah. and you know, yeah. yeah. I, I, if I say that because I don't think I'll be able to last it. I. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely like a. It's definitely like a. You know, the financial side of it. You don't have to pay for extra labor, but it, there's a boundary there, right? Because yeah, you're paying for a certain, slaves. a certain type of relationship. <laughs> with a, an employee versus a spouse where it's like you're both in it together and it makes more financial sense because you don't necessarily pay them the same way because you both end up owning the money when the sales happen. So the labor yeah, you very much cheaper, have to look at it like one big pot sort of, but mm. you know, it's different in that way. Um, mm. But. When you find that out, you let me know, because <laughs> I'm sure everybody who works with their partner could use more advice and more opinions on how that works for other people to make sure that yeah. that doesn't fall apart. You know what I'm thinking about the episode that we had with Carrie and Josh, but I can't remember the number, but um, we had an episode with Josh Heim and Carrie Heim, and they work together, and she's a very, like, they're a good team because she's very cut and dry very much a Ryan type, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, need a list. Has She's very a goal, analytical and very, very analytical, heavy. very numbers, numbers heavy. He is very aloof mm-hmm. in the best way. He's just like, <laughs> he, I mean, he'll tell you himself. He's like a 12 year old kid. He's like, he loves life and he's, you know, he's like, yay, we get to do pottery, you know? And <laughs> she yeah. like, and they're a really good team because she keeps him in line and he keeps her in like, you know, like breaking the rules a little bit. You know, they like kind of like work off of each other yeah. that way. That was episode so, 31. Pottery, 31. flowers, and family with Joshua and Carrie Heim. Yeah. That was when and they you have, were actually I could person. use a little bit more Carrie. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Andrew and is very like, supportive of me taking breaks and he's constantly like, you know, you shouldn't just be working 12 hours straight. And that's lovely. But also like. Oh man, I could use a little more money. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so it, it would be nice to have a little bit more motivation, carry style to say, you know, get back yeah. to it. Yeah. Mm. Everybody yeah, needs to carry. Yeah, it's a tough balance. It's <laughs> like you can self impose that you need like break time or just take time out of your busy day to like go walk or like. Mm-hmm. take care of your yard a little bit or something like that where it's like yeah. you just do it for the sake of taking a break and doing something without like I'm I'm getting more um, appreciating more doing things without sound or like feeling like I always have to be actively doing something like just mm-hmm. going and walking in the back like on the property in the backyard or something or you know walking to go get my tea without having a podcast going mm-hmm. or watering Stuck the flowers like bit. that's kind of nice ryan i can just see you as an old man just like troll like strolling in the backyard with a cup of tea 
I'm like, <laughs> just like, My just like strolling. Right this is great. <laughs> yeah, just like strolling and like just stopping and just like staring at a leaf. And then, <laughs> and then continuing on. I'd be more like, I see a neighborhood cat and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm walking and there's a cat out, I will literally stop and like, did you know, call them over if they come over, and I'll like. Pet, did we like, see Isaac? or cat? Yeah. Did you see Isaac's oh, stories Isaac with those kittens? So cute. Sweet mother of all that is holy. Those are the cutest goddamn kittens. It's unleashed. <laughs> he started sharing, and he's uh, out of the gate with them. He's he doesn't like cats. He's going to be a cat person by the end of this. I hope he's so. not a cat person. I mean, like, he likes cats. He kind of likes cats, but he's not a cat person. They're more dog people. Do they even have but dogs? They had a dog. Um, okay. Yeah. Why do you yeah. have to be one or the other? Can't you just be an animal person? They're not animal people. Like, oh, they got okay. the dog for Javi, I think. But, like, you know, and but I think it's a great step for Isaac. And, obviously, he he loves mittens. He loves mittens. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly. It did take him mittens. an awful long time to share those kittens, but that's okay. You know, jerk. I did take part in the harassment. So sorry, Isaac. Thank nice. you. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, Aletha will appreciate this. We're, uh, we're teaching Marble a new trick um, <laughs> with the treats. So it's kind of in its infancy, but Marble Pancakes has a little ri- rivalry, uh, not rivalry, like a. It's like a long distance friendship. Two peas in a pod, no idea about. right? Like, yeah, two yeah. peas in a pod. Two cats in a. A hammock. A, hammock. <laughs> a window. I perch. just pictured two cats in a hammock. That is an ugly scene. <laughs> <laughs> They're flailing everywhere and the. <laughs> This hammock like swinging around or something. <laughs> Who would win in that hammock Thunderdome oh, between Marvel and? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you said pancakes is only like five pounds. That sounds so tiny. She's a little. She's a little baby. Was she with the runt? Was she the runt? She broke her hip when she was a kid, and I think maybe it stunted her growth because her her whiskers are big enough that maybe she could have been. Maybe because she's a, a fluff ball, she, she just looks bigger than that. But yeah, she does look bigger than that. They're getting haircuts on Friday. I'm so excited. Oh, <laughs> they look so ridiculous! I can't wait. Make sure you are do all... before and after. I will. I'll well, share, Vincent's I'll a share short the hair thing. though, right? But Nimbus and yeah, he doesn't need a haircut. Pancakes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got the short so hair cats because we don't want it. we don't want the extra hair. But there's still hair everywhere. Uh so yep. so she can already catch it in her off the jump, right? So we're trying yeah. to like hover awesome. it over her about three feet off the ground and she'll go up for it and then we kind of spin it and she'll kind of do a little twirl, like trying to get it. So she'll do kind of like a three sixty and then we toss it to her and she catches <gasps> it. Ooh, yeah. that's cute. Pancakes will get up like a little mirror cat, but I don't know if she'll turn in circles. Yeah. So Marble kind of like you... stands up on two and then she, I'm kind of moving it with my hand. How did you learn that she was capable of catching treats? Both of them. Um, I think I just tossed uh... it to her before. I don't just put it on the, on the floor. I would like toss it to her. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was something like that. I would I would hold it up for her, and then my dad, who is a cat person, his cat wants to chase it. So even if the cat's sitting in his lap, she might take two or three, but eventually she'll get on the floor and be like, all right, let's do something. I want to run around. So he'll toss that treat, and I think he mentioned that to me sometime, and I, I tossed one for pancakes, and she caught it, and I was like, oh, my God. This is amazing. Uh, Lloyd... Lloyd... He's a very smart cat until it comes to treats. Then he becomes <laughs> okay. an absolute idiot. Um, but uh, I used to call them and they'd jump on the table and that's where they got their treats. But um, like at the store. I've never seen a cat like Babs. <laughs> Fucking Babs. She, <laughs> I have these fish treats that Nick gave me. Thanks, Nick. Um, they're like little minnows. And the cats fucking love them. And well, 
Lloyd loves them. And I give him one. And then I put one in front of Babs g- gently. And she looks at it. She looks back up at me. And then she looks at it again. She sniffs it. And then Lloyd eats it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's Vincent. That's, that's how oh, but is. I've I've separated them. I've separated them, and she won't eat the treats. She will not eat them. She does not like treats. Oh, wow. she has yeah. a specific brand that she likes. Mm. She ain't getting that in this house. <laughs> it's only very recently that Nimbus will come in on the treats because we've put her on a diet, and now she's decided she's hungry. She wants to have second breakfast and 11 Z's and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I love that name, Nimbus. Nimbus, yeah. She's a real cutie. Yeah, she's a real fluff ball. Yeah. Until Friday. <laughs> yeah. Very excited. <laughs> okay. So we'll see. We'll get the documentation of the Marvel treat trick. I'm excited. We'll see. Me too. And uh, then I'll see if I can get pancakes to do the same. Yeah, it's it. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see if I can toss the treat to Lloyd and if he'll see it. I think it's like I think you won't even see it. I think it's like like he'll I toss the it to way. Autumn. Like Autumn is just she doesn't follow the treat. She just like knows there's yeah. treats in the vicinity, but she doesn't like realize that it's like in mm-hmm. my hand or something. I tried to show Lloyd his sticker today that Savannah made for him, and he just ignored it. He was just like, and then he moved away. But it, he stopped meowing for a second. So <laughs> that was a very cute sticker. I loved it. I know. I did too. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was really. that made just for Lloyd? Yeah, it was my birthday present from Savannah. Oh, love it. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Okay, it is 12.30. Eastern? It is. What is that in Canadian? 12.30. I'm in the same time zone as you. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Becca and I had this conversation. We were like, I don't know. Same as Toronto and New York and, and I don't know, places. <laughs> I don't know. No, well, we won't we won't talk about the fact that the fucking time zones are absolutely ridiculous in this country. The countries, um, <laughs> our countries. Babe, yeah, I get it. It wobbles. But, There's yeah. one completely different time zone in Canada in Newfoundland. It's like half an hour different than everything else. Why? Of course, Why? weird. Why are they doing that? Just messing with us. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, I'm really happy that our first Canadian said a boot. And, um, <laughs> a boot, I, <laughs> or oot. <laughs> um, so thank you for that. That was lovely. That was lovely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't notice I did that. It's okay. It's in your <laughs> DNA. It is. I'll take I think it. When you're, I good. think when you're born in Canada, it's just like, comes out. Oh, Canadian. I just I just emerge from my mother and go, oh, I'm sorry. I was about that. <laughs> I was about that. Give me some syrup. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We don't have baby formula here. We just have maple syrup. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Are there are there people right. that, that no fact carry checkers around, on this one? Are, are there people that carry around like maple syrup, like Buddy the Elf, and like? <laughs> All right, I have a funny story about that. Um, not normally because that's really bad for you, but uh, I used to have a flask of maple syrup that somebody gifted me. <laughs> And I had it at my desk, like my station at work. I, I worked for a while at the Smart Style, which is the one inside of Walmart's like first choice, kind of the same company. Um, 
before I went to the salon that I was at for like 10 years. Anyway, it's right at the front where all the cash registers were. So every once in a while, when, when I was like completely overworked and hadn't ingested any calories for who knows how long, I'd take a swig of maple syrup. Oh my and God. I am positive. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been so many people at all of the cash registers being like, that stylist is like hitting the whiskey over there. <laughs> and meanwhile, it's like shot of maple. Delicious. <laughs> that's amazing love it that's that's great so good <laughs> i feel like i think we should yeah so i feel like a place that makes syrup good. would be like a pretty interesting tour like a brewery tour but like a syrup syrupy i don't know yeah Do, it smells they, good they probably have that kind syrup of syrup is a syrup is a really big business real big it's a mm. And there it's was a not guy across that, Canada. It's only in the, this part of Canada. It's only in one part, yeah. Um, there was a guy that stole uh, like $2 million worth of syrup, I think. Gosh, oh, yeah. he was on, an, he was on like a documentary piece. thing. He was yeah. on like a documentary about money. And um, yeah, there was like a big syrup scandal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So. <laughs> it's a I, thing. I think like, I've read that there's some sort of like Canadian maple syrup reserve or something. Maybe that's just an is. individual company. I don't know. Is there? No, no, no. There is. There is. There is wow. actually a Canadian maple syrup <laughs> reserve, and it's a big thing. It's like it's like the it's bad. Like there's <laughs> um, if you. If you don't like participate in their organization, they like cut you off and it's bad. It's kind of like, like a Monsanto. syrup mafia. Yeah, it's kind of like Monsanto and the is it Monsanto? Mon Monsanto? The seed the, stealing place. Yeah, it's kind of like their situation in the United States where they um they like if you don't comply with their wishes, then they bury you essentially. I know a lot of food industry is like that, that you have to follow every regulation and go through the processing plants of whatever food it is, or you don't get to sell it. It's a real, real issue. Like you can't just buy eggs down the street because they have to be processed the same way as every other egg. Yeah. Unless or they're have, yeah, you know, have like certain, certain chemicals induced into things that that company owns and like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, that's big processing for lots of things. And unfortunately, when you have such huge, I mean, this definitely doesn't have anything to do with pottery, but when you have such huge amounts of food coming through singular processing plants, you end up with, if one thing goes wrong, then like half of the country's food is yeah. contaminated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary stuff. I want to have some chickens. <laughs> That's where I go there. I want chickens and, and maple trees. You have space <laughs> for chickens? No. No, I probably don't. I probably don't actually want chickens. They're real messy, but I like the idea of it. I've never heard anybody hate their chickens, though. No. I think I would love them so much that I would be like, I'm so sorry for stealing your eggs and maybe eating you later. But their eggs are like their period. They want you to take it. They're like, get this bitch out of yeah. me. Yeah, except but... I'd be bothering them. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, just excuse me. I know you're resting. Let me just take this thing from you. <laughs> um, the most heartwarming thing is watching Leanne from Elan Pottery with her ducks and chickens. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. So cute. Oh my cute. god. Yellow duck, Miss Fluffy Pants or whatever her name is. Like the names. <laughs> so Sweet cute. Jesus. I was Medium asking duck. her about the I was asking her about that bus. I was like, you're going to put that on your property? And she's like, yeah, that's for the chickens. I was like, oh, I thought that was going to be like, I thought she was going to make it like livable or something. That's fucking great. Oh, I didn't realize but that. I just chickens. saw that the other day, but I guess I must have not listened to it. I was it like, that's sound great. Off something. That's probably going to make them much safer and all that stuff. I saw a, uh, oh, there was an, there was another artist that had some chickens and they were, they were really um, sad because of, you know, fox or something, you know? Oh, yeah. Foxes and weasels, man. And they didn't even, like, eat them. They just killed them and, like, mm -hmm. left. Oh, yeah. that's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. They look cute. Oh. Or not. 
No, they are. We've had we've had a fox curl up in the backyard before in the, on a sunny day. It was kind of cute, but it was like Rachel was like, "That doesn't look like." It. I was like, "Yeah, that's a fox. It's like you know, reddish, orangish." Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot of green space behind your new place, eh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I thought we were going to get out of this podcast without her saying A, but we didn't. We didn't. And then, and then Rachel hears some coyote sometimes at night. It's like weird. I don't know exactly we where they're at. We still have coyote but, down in ours. But they're back there. Yeah. I don't like them. Scary. Mm-mm. <laughs> All what right. are the... Oh, yeah. Should, let's should go. We, let's wrap this yeah, thing let's up. Go. All right. Where can we find you on the Instagrams? Oh, that was yours. I'm sorry, Ryan. No, go for it. Where do we find you on Instagram? Yeah. Me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am at RD Ceramics. At Aletha Bean. <laughs> and it's A L E A T H A. A L E A T H A B E A N. Yes, Where'd yes. the bean come from? Aletha Bean. Um, okay, so in hairstyling, my boss that I had forever, her name is Sam, and I called her Samantha Bean. Or no, her somebody in her life called her Samantha Bean. And she thought that was cute, so she called me Aletha Bean. And that stuck. And that was a long time ago. And then she just started calling me Bean. And then she started calling me Bean Face. And now she just calls me Face. <laughs> so Okay. <laughs> Aletha Bean was a long time ago, but that was my handle on the internet. A long time hey, ago, so that, face. that's been it. Hey, face! That's I call face. her pants. Smith pants. So she's just pants my face. <laughs> Christmas nice. cards are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Aletha yeah. Bean. Yeah, that's her great. whole family calls me Bean. It's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. It's stuck. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. All right. Thanks, thanks, everybody, for listening. Check her Etsy shop out as well. Yes. Buy oh, thank something. You. Yeah. Now that we know it's cheaper to ship to Texas. I don't know if it always is. I won't I won't say that it always is, but it seems to be a weird thing that one time. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, if you're American, I ship I ship American too, because we're all on the same chunk of rock. That we are. All right. Thanks everybody for listening and we'll catch you next time. All right. Bye. Thank you, Alita. Thanks for having me. Bye. All right. And then we'll cut it there. Holy crap. Yeah, that was fun. long. That was fun. That was three hours. I'm so sorry if we I just kept reco- talking about things. But... We started recording for three hours, but I think it was actually t- probably two. No, I started hours recording before. when the good stuff started happening. Yeah. It was probably like okay. 45 full. Okay. It was It'll good. Be three hours. So. We did yeah, talk about be like, a whole lot, so I apologize for that, but I didn't. Uh, no, the world needed there. this podcast. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I haven't laughed that now. much in a long time. Like, I was <laughs> crying. <laughs> I can't believe that I just gave the entire world the stereotype that people fucking drink maple <laughs> syrup at their desk. <laughs> Um, no, you didn't. You made it very clear that not normal people do that. (laughs) It was good. It was one of those cute little ones. It's like this big and it has a little screw top and it's got like the horse and buggy on the front. I'd go and take a swig of it. I'm I'm sure. Like, I'm not surprised it didn't fire. So people were probably like, that one's drinking. So like if can, (laughs) so if you made like ceramic flasks, like there's not necessarily a guarantee that people would use it for alcohol. Like they could Is put some, ever? would they would put some syrup in there, right? Or some people would. Well, I don't know. In the middle of the states, would people put corn syrup in there? No. They might. No. I think no. it's about as like to put maple okay. syrup in a flask. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put I put maple syrup in one of my oil bottles. It worked out really nicely. Like I'm that. guessing it's it's more liquid though, right? It's not as thick as like. It it's, depends. It's, depends how far you thin. boil it down. Yeah. So, um, early spring cooking syrup has more flavor, and it's usually a little thicker. Or is that later spring? I don't know. It, a little thicker is more cooking syrup, and thinner is more pancake syrup. Huh. Pancake syrup. It's 
like lighter and almost almost watery. Mm-hmm. It it all depends on what you like though and who you go to because if you go to one farm to the next you're gonna have it done differently because you know great grandpa of whatever says that it's supposed to be this thick and that's how thick you make it so whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording and then. We'll-